Time for Mac Break Weekly. What a great show we're going to have. Justin Robert Young is here, Andy Anako, and we're going to unbox this new 7-inch tablet from Google. Could this be a harbinger of what's to come from Apple? Stay tuned. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 308, recorded July 17th, 2012. The Monkey's Got a Gun. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Smile Software, makers of the new Text Expander 4 which dramatically increases the ways you can automate your work with advanced fill-in snippets. Great for creating form letter templates that can be customized on the fly. Learn more at smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle, the fast and easy way to sell your iPhone, iPad, MacBook, or Android smartphone from your home or office. Find out what your gadget is worth at gazelle.com. And by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic, continuous, unlimited backup for your computer files. Just $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. Use the offer code MACBREAK to get two bonus months with purchase. And by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, visit Audible.com slash MACBREAK. It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Going to be the silliest one on record because look who's here. Andy Anotko. And uh, his friends, Mel and uh, Carl, love that picture. Looks like an Annie Leibovitz, but it's like probably a fake Annie Leibovitz. Oh, well, I think I think if it were an Annie Leibovitz, they'd both be like 87-year-old men naked and hugging, and I don't think we'd <laughs> We don't know what's under that. This is, this is probably the best way to go with that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Andy writes for the Chicago Sun-Times, and of course, is a regular Mac Break Weekly. Uh, Alex Lindsay is traveling once again, but good news, we've got a, a fill-in that is just going to make it so much fun. Mr. And this is why it's going to be silly. I was just being silly about being silly. This is really silly. Sure. Justin Robert Young. <laughs> Hi. Of the NSFW show, and really weird things. Weird things, the podcast. Yeah. Podcast, yeah. That's it. Yeah, me, Brian Brushwood, and Andrew Main talk about the week's worth of uh, weird news, and uh, it's, a, it's a fun time. So Anything that you have that you want to throw in that's weird for the Mac Break Weekly show, please do. It's kind of, we're all in kind of this uh, it's waiting It's a holding period, period yeah. right? Because the iPhone 5, pre presumably this fall, and uh, maybe, a, I don't know, maybe a 7-inch iPad. There seems to be a lot of rumors, but there's nothing. Apple, you know, I think they're off for the summer. Yeah, well, or like, they, it's one of those things where it's like you go to Disney World, and they're just the high... The high, you know, panels are up, and it's right. like building something right. soon. Coming you know? soon. Yeah, uh, be available this fall. Right. So uh, I'm sure they're hard at work somewhere down in Cupertino. The I mean, elves are cobbling. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you hear a jet ski revving like in the behind the partition. <laughs> 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 Well, that's and that's Cook the funny thing about Apple. For everybody, Woo. it doesn't exactly. say coming. A soon. dolphin like just makes a noise. I mean, like, what the hell is going on back there? There's a dolphin and a jet ski. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> With Apple, they don't even say coming soon. They just there's nothing here. There's play, right. pay no attention to anything behind. Move along, citizen. Move yeah, on. it's just you know the iPad 4s is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Keep buying it until we say otherwise. That's where, by the way, we were talking about this on Twitter on Sunday, and, and it seemed that Microsoft made a strategic error when it announced the next version of Windows Phone, Windows Phone 8, and at the same time said any existing phones sold will not be upgraded, and oh, by the way, please buy these old phones. <laughs> it's like, what kind of marketing? That's just, I mean, Apple's got it right. Don't say anything until it's ready, right? Yeah. Well, and then same thing with the tablet, with the with the the win, with the, the new surface. Microsoft. Well, that I understand because Microsoft doesn't have anything to cannibalize, and what they're hoping to do is please don't buy anything from Apple or Android stuff because we're going to have something soon. It's going to be really amazing as soon as we let journalists touch it. They'll tell you. Yeah. It'll be really, yeah. really amazing. Meanwhile, but Apple's right; they don't say anything. Yeah, but but don't you kind of prefer the way that Microsoft uh, handles things? Because is, isn't it good to at least say, well, here's what we're working on. Here's where we're going so that at least you, you look the market can prepare for it and also the market can react to it. I mean, when you just drop things on people's heads immediately, well, you don't really I mean, you don't really know if people are going to understand what the thing is about. It's good for us. Gives us something to talk about. Otherwise, we're talking about speculation. Uh, I think it's bad for the business, though, because uh, uh, you get don't you. 
I don't know. It seems well, like the, Apple's their, got it. Their the, business or for the, their business, good for our business, bad for their business, right? Because I mean, it's it's hard when, to say. Well, it's bad I, for their I business, say the, the most surface, successful business ever, right? It was right to say the, 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 oh, the surface. Yeah, Microsoft. Okay. I, no, it was right to announce the surface. I'm saying the win, but the Windows Phone 8 is exactly the opposite of Apple. Does it? Which right. They're pre-announcing right. a product that is not available, and furthermore, saying that anything you buy between now and whenever it is available will not be upgraded. I mean, it doesn't seem like they're very consumer focused. I just you don't know? get it. Like. It I agree. It's right, for Andy. It's right for us. Yeah. It gives us something to talk about. Yeah, I don't know. So maybe, maybe they kind of have to bite the bullet there, where they realize that this maybe they have to pre they have to pre announce Windows 8 to get more developer support for it. Right. You know that the one of the first questions is going to be what about Windows 7 phones? And right. it's not not dropping the bomb is a lot stupider and a lot more damaging than saying we are e eager to support all of our existing devices and existing customers while still showing them the wonderness of the future of the platform. Which is uh, when I, when I was writing my reviews of a couple of different uh, Android phones, ship that ship with Android 4.0, and of course. Android 4.1 was just released. Every time I was trying to get like uh, quotes, or are you committed to doing an update so that you will, so that one day your existing consumers will be able to use 4.1? And you get the two paragraphs of forward-looking statements and boilerplate right. saying we are honored, we are thrilled with the invite with the with the support for Android 4.1 that Google has provided as our strategic limited partnership in the United States. And it's like okay, so you're saying that you're not you don't want to tell us to yes. go. <laughs> so you're right, Andy. Go you know what? I'm going to take box. it back. I want to. I think Microsoft's being being unusually candid with consumers and giving them it, giving them the choice to make uh, a choice, which, you know what, I should commend them for it. I mean, I don't even, know. Even if, it's, even if it's possible they're doing it by accident, Re realize yeah. this is a huge company with lots of divisions that aren't talking to each other quite as much as, as they should. You'd be surprised. I mean, I think I think everybody who's dealt with these large companies, there there are times when you were, you know you're talking to a vice president sometimes when you know something that he seems to not know. Right. <laughs> there was there, yeah. there was one time I, I will mention it was like four years ago when I you know of course I'm 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 uh, on the on the train for my meeting for my briefing having this having this 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 uh, this briefing with this guy and I get this piece of news about how another division of the same company was doing a product I assumed it was going to be oh so is this this thing you've just told me about does it work really really well with blah 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 he said what do you mean uh, your other division said that you're also doing a desktop <laughs> operating system with. When did this happen? Yeah, like, I actually right. like had to take a device out. This is what I read, and he's reading, 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 and it, and he dropped his he dropped his guard for a good like eleven seconds before he went back into. Well, we uh, we are we're part of a larger company. This is very the wheel was part of a larger vision, and this interview is over. <laughs> that's a measure. That's a measure of how well somebody's been media trained. Finish is how they, they get out of the suite. How they can deal with those moments when they get blindsided by. Something. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Microsoft thing. It just seems like they're they're dealing with a lot of different. They have a lot of different people to please, you know. Like Apple pleases above and beyond, above anything else, consumers. Their relationship with consumers is the only thing that they care about, and everything else kind of feeds. Yeah, but what that, I think right? Andy's saying, which is a, a kind of a new way to contextualize it, that I hadn't thought of, is that what Microsoft's done is better for consumers because at least a consumer can make an informed decision now. You buy a Windows Phone Seven, and knowing that it's not going to be upgradable. We don't know what the new anything about the new iPhone. I mean, or, for instance, I'll give you a really good example. We're all speculating about the connector in the new iPhone. Yeah. And uh, Apple's not saying. Wouldn't it be very nice of Apple to say, "Hey, well, don't buy any more thirty-pin stuff." Don't, don't spend, <laughs> before we spend four hundred dollars to have that hard dock connector yeah. installed inside your your thirty thousand dollar car. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you might want to. That, that would be dealing with customers, you know, really honestly, to their detriment because then people are going to stop buying thirty-pin. Stuff, including the F4S. Yeah. So, um, in a way, I think maybe, all right, you know what, you, Andy, uh, this is rare, but you have actually completely flipped me over. I think you're right. Microsoft was very honest and forthright and said and told people, look, this is a great, and you know, I think Lumi is a nice phone. I don't, I, I don't knock it, yeah. but don't expect to upgrade it. And by being honest, I think maybe, okay, I'll give him some points. But the but the other the other aspect of this is remember that there there is such a thing as institutional personality that yeah. that spreads beyond what a, any one executive wants to do. There is actually a personality that's consistent to a company. And remember that this is a company that has never had the entire destiny of a product in their hands before. <laughs> Even if they wanted to right. maintain a, to, a super top secret phone or tablet until they until the day of release, it's always been 
Microsoft comes up with an idea. They have to propose it to a bunch of hardware manufacturers. The hardware manufacturers might talk about it, might not. It's possible that a CEO gets bored during an interview and starts talking about this wonderful plan. They never had the ability to keep the tight lid on something. So I think that it became institutionally part of their character to not worry about keeping something secret until the last minute. Maybe a year from now, two years from now, after they have launched their first completely in-house product, and they realize that, wait a minute, why are we letting people like say mean things to us about how they we wouldn't <laughs> let anybody type the keyboard? We kind of invent. We kind of invited that that hurt upon ourselves. Well, let's, we're just going to like have have our little retreats and in, in Sonoma, work on our little projects, and then show it off in one big event. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about what Apple is saying. One thing they've done is they've released the third beta of iOS six uh, to developers, um, and I guess I'm guessing that we're pretty close to the ready to manufacture. I mean, they they talked about this fall. <clears throat> and I presume that it is with new hardware. But when you get to the third build three weeks after the previous build, um, sounds like we're getting pretty close. Of course, nobody who has it will talk. So even if Andy, for instance, had it, he couldn't talk about it. Had iOS 6? Right. Because you're... For the beta? You're you're enjoined yeah. if you're a developer from talking. I don't I know. Could Do you have it? I can certainly... No. Uh. People talk to me on Twitter. I asked today right. on Twitter. People said that it was... Uh, What'd they say? That it was a huge, uh, uh, an upgrade for them in terms of a lot of the bugs that they were seeing before, specifically in terms of it flashing back to the Apple screen, but not actually restarting. F so is that is not fixed? No, that is fixed. It is I mean, fixed. They're, they're noticing, I mean, they've only had it for two days, but the stuff that they noticed two days in <clears throat> on the previous builds are not a problem in this particular beta. But, I mean, give them time, let them kick it around a little bit. So, uh... Of course, Jan, uh, uh, you know, people are leaking. Um, one, according, this is from Mac Rumors, of course, uh, which always has it. Eric uh, Slivka running. One key addition, new section in the settings app for maps, allows users, I like this, to change the volume of the navigation voice, to set distances in miles or kilometers, and to set map labels to display either in the local language or always in English and map label sizes to either normal or I'll large. I'll tell you, I think that's going to be very, it's going to be helpful for me, and I'll get into this because my, my pick is actually a, a GPS app, but uh, I think it interacting with when you're listening to an audiobook or music mm -hmm. or something, yeah. having a variable volume mm -hmm. for me personally will be a, a great change in my life. And I like the idea of using Siri to, integrate, in, in, to yeah. interact with a map. It's like, it, I think the, these are the really cool things that are going to separate the best super phones in the future because it's taken a while for every one of the major platforms to have. Now every, now everything has 4G. Now everything has you know, cut, copy, and paste and, and, and super sophisticated things like that. Now it really is going to become a race of inches as we figure out which one has those little touches that make you feel as though this is the one that you want to keep backing. I mean, I'm still using... Uh, the the Galaxy Three as my primary phone. I'm still using the the my iPhone as for actual phone calls and texts. But this is like where I'm getting like most of my navigation and most of my like in car uh, audiobook and stuff entertainment from. I like the idea that the default action seems to be when the navigation needs to make a notification. Not only does it automatically pause whatever's playing, but it actually t has a way apparently of communicating to say, "Why don't you don't pick up exactly where you left off." pick up about one half second or one full second before where you left off. So if I'm listening to an audiobook, for instance, it's like, and then Gimli picked up his sword and turned left on Route 1 in oh. 30 miles. Picked up his sword. It, it, it's it's almost exactly as though an actual right. narrator got interrupted and couldn't just simply pick up mid-syllable. He had to start off. What, what, what sentence was I reading at that time? And yeah, so, so that's what... That, that, that's what it does in, in the new Android. Like, it'll pause your content, uh, save the directions, it's, and then reset it? It, se it seems as though every time a system needs to say something, now I, I, don't, I don't know the details. I'm going from the experience I've had over the past two or three weeks with this. Yeah. And it seems as though every time a system-level alert has to happen, either it's saying, hey, you've got a new text message, or, hey, turn left at the next, uh, at the next junction, whatever app I happen to be in does that sort of pause behavior. Yeah. No, that's been my experience on the S3 as well. And I, yeah, and I don't know who does that if it's... The app doing that, if it's the Galaxy doing that, if it's Android doing that, uh, I don't know, but it's good. If so, it's, yeah, it's, nice. it's not. It's not like that on you, iOS you, five. You miss, a, you miss a bit. No, it'll like you'll hear you'll it'll, it'll be like they're talking over each other. So my GPS app will be like at Petaluma Boulevard, and then turn right no, on. He he slapped yeah. me on my rumpus. Sure, exactly. And it's you don't want to <laughs> miss. I'm, when I'm listening to the audiobook of Rumpus Slappers, which is one of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> You know, actually, no. I was, there, there's, there's a great, there's a great 20th anniversary 
audiobook of uh, the first Heir to the Empire. Um, and it, it was just an amazing. The what? Heir to the Empire. What's uh, that? The, the Grand Admiral Thrawn. I have no idea uh, what, you, what language even Star you're Wars. speaking Star Wars. now. Oh, yeah. Star Wars. So there's a great, and it's all recreated. It's one guy reading it, but it's kind of audio play style, and they have all the sound effects and everything. Is that an audible book? It is audible. Save it for your pick, because awesome. we're going to have an audible ad. We'll talk later. more about it. But yeah. it's not as cool when you're hearing Han Solo negotiate with Turn Talon left Hard on in the middle Mission of it. Street. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I, see, I, I, don't, I don't know what, at what level it's being done by the system. I, my favorite iPhone GPS app uh, or navigation app is uh, Motion X's GPS Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually, I think, lets you choose. Do you, when, when there's a system interruption, do you want the audio to, to mute out or do you want the audio to pause and then resume? Uh, so it also has its own built-in iTunes uh, player uh, transport oh, so you wow. don't have to leave the app to get there. So I don't know whether it's better off to have simply a system level resource that controls it or whether it's simple, it's, a, it's better to have individual apps and let them come up with their own clever responses. But Well, I think if, if it's an official Mac app, like like the maps, you know, would yeah. be, then that has to be, they have to solve that problem. And that's part of, you know, them taking over that responsibility from, you know, a official third party app like what Google Maps yeah. was. Other new features yeah. in iOS 6, road work, traffic accidents in the Maps app. That's great. Road work yeah. especially. I like that. Yeah. Answer and decline buttons for FaceTime calls have returned. iMessage on iPad is now accepting phone numbers as a valid contact info. Greater 3D flyover coverage in Maps. That's probably as they fly over cities, they can add them. Glyphs. For, uh, you're going to have to explain what this means to me. Glyphs. Is this a Star Wars term? Glyph? <laughs> Glyphs for bookmarks, reading list, and history in Safari. Oh, is that like an icon? A really right, small when, icon. When, I, I believe. I believe it's when you uh, the, the, the 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 mini either the mini icon that is associated with the URL the that's, that's provided by the server. Yeah. I think that's what it is. The I was I was I I, I myself read about this on an openly publicly available website. <laughs> and uh, that's, yes, that's of course you did. No, no, no. I get. I, get uh, I, I do take that seriously. Whenever, whenever there's, yeah. whenever there's a question about like that, it's like, did I read about this right. on Mac Rumors or Apple Insider or TU, TU, right. AW? Then okay, yes. Then I can talk about the. As, as, just for people who don't understand, for, when you're on an NDA, which apparently Andy is, a non-disclosure agreement. If something is publicly known, then you can talk about it because it's yeah. been it's been busted already. And so this is stuff that's in the in the public domain, in effect, because it's been written about. Right. I would. I would. I would never confirm or deny that I'd actually seen anything actually happening on any build that I actually have. Nor would you be allowed to. Exactly. Yeah. I am a, my, my, my strength is at the strength of 10 men because my honor is pure. Yes. So you should, we should just have another Skype that's just an Andy and Otko puppet. <laughs> and you could, we could just switch to that and be like, oh, I think the Glyph's solution is a pretty good idea. Oh, Andy puppet. Say hello to the nice folks, Andy. Hello to the nice folks, Andy. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Andy You're Puppet is not under non disclosure. Nice people today. Exactly. And now all the <laughs> iOS 6 features while Andy Notko drinks a glass of water. <laughs> iCloud.com email addresses are being rolled out. So I'm still a, a me.com. Uh, but now we will have iCloud.com as uh, new mobile or replacements for the no mobile me uh, addresses, which is good. Man. If, you, if you sign up for a new Apple ID or enable mail on your iCloud account, you'll automatically receive an at iCloud.com email address instead of me.com. The email addresses just seem like the one thing that they can never be comfortable with. You know, it's always, you it was, know. First it was dot Mac. Mac, and then, then me. Then it was me. And then iCloud, and they always kind of announce it like, finally, we're <laughs> done with the dot Macs, in with the me. So it, now I'm a mobile me user, uh, and Mac.com and me.com still work, but can I be an iCloud? To, well, I should try it to see if I send something to... Me at iCloud.com. I, I hope I hope they do better with this than they have in previous times. I, I there's so many times I still do not. I I, I was I, I got the, my Mac.com address like the day that it was actually announced, mm -hmm. uh, and and ever since then every time there's been a change I still don't know all the all these uh, new logins would say enter your email address it should be blah blah at mobileme.com and I have to sort of tense up saying, okay, if I type in blah, blah at Mac.com, are you going to tell me that's not a valid address, even though technically it should have Oh, man. No, no it is. That's, I think it, it, it genuinely is a problem, especially for, you know, for what .Mac was and what MobileMe was in terms of being a subscription service. It, it just always seemed kind of weird that that was something yeah. that was jerked around as much as it was.
Yeah. Well, meanwhile, since it's being used as part of your Apple ID, or at least initially it transferred your Apple ID, it became really, really important for that right. to be also part of sort of a locked in address that you're never going to lose. So, and uh, even today, doing? It, it's, I mean, no, it's, it's just that there, there, there's that category of stuff where if someone asks me a simple question about how something works, I think I know the answer, but I won't answer them until I've done like another 45 minutes worth of research so that I know that, no, there isn't some sort of a subtle thing that you haven't figured out yet about this. It really is the way that you think it was. So much of so much of iCloud works exactly the way that it's supposed to work. But still, when you have these leftovers from MobileMe and Me.com, it's like, I let me get back to you if you're <laughs> Gern Blanston at Mobile Me. I don't think you can log in at me. To, oh God, let me hang on. Let me try my own. Oh, jeez. Oh. I I really feel like there's some things Apple does really well, and then there's some things like uh, cloud that Apple seems that I think they should just hire somebody who really knows. Of course, Microsoft's well, having trouble they, with it they too. Have, they have. I think. I think. I think part of the part have of the problem. This is. For, for some reason, I think we're feeling this a lot more keenly in 2012 than in any previous year. People tend to forget that Apple is a regular company staffed by mortals. Uh, it's, <laughs> what? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It's like the, the fact that something doesn't work properly, that doesn't mean that either A, this is the end of Apple, or B, that whoever is saying this doesn't work properly just hates Apple. He's a hater. Ignore the hater who says that right. this should be working this way instead of the other way. Uh, I mean, it's I, iCloud is a huge, huge undertaking. I, I, I would I would almost say it's as big as the uh, as uh, when they transition tried to transition from uh, OS nine to OS ten, where you kind of got the it, it became clear pretty early on that they weren't going to turn this service on with one throw of one switch. It's going to be about throwing multiple switches, then watching multiple transformers blow. <laughs> That's the only way to identify, okay, those are the transformers on the grid that were faulty. Let's fix those, throw the switch again and see what happens. Well, but they've had uh, a lot of faulty transformers in this particular product. Let's not forget yeah. well, the all yeah. hands where Steve Jobs brings the, uh, and this was years ago, where he brought the entire Dot .Mac team in. And, and just said, shot should them be gangland style Basically, against the wall. He fired a lot of them and said, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You've let me down. You've let Apple down. You've let your coworkers down. This is crap. And I mean, that wasn't so long. That wasn't so recently. So yeah. this is an ongoing thing, isn't it, Andy? Well, well, well we're talk I think we're talking about two different things. So the, the problem with MobileMe and .Mac were a problem where... Uh, cloud-based storage and cloud-based software was a moving target for five or six years. It's only fairly recently that we started talking about I, 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 the word iDisk precedes the word cloud storage by a number of years. Right. So right. by the time by the time someone could take an idea, a really great idea, off the whiteboard and actually implement it, everybody who was shopping for that kind of a feature has already moved on to Dropbox or moved on to something by a smaller company who could be a lot more agile about how they implemented it. And when by the time they finally figured out, nope, here is the fundamental thing that we're going to be calling iCloud. It is actually a basic service that we want every single piece of software to be able to access and support. And it's going to be supported on the OS level as fundamentally as any other service, as fundamentally as printing is being served. Once you get down to that level, it's not something that you can just simply drag into the finder as a plugin. It really is an architectural feature. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do something that, that to the architecture, to the foundations of an operating system, it's just complicated as hell. I mean, I, 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 I as much as actually probably more strongly than anybody else, because I have a lot of friends who are developers who are really just getting kicked right in the pants by iCloud day in and day out. I mean, solutions that uh, they, they wish for solutions that would simply be difficult to implement. They're being faced with solutions that seem impossible to implement. And when they look to Apple for help, Apple is saying, we would be very interested to know what happens when you try that. You should go ahead and try that and tell us what happens. <laughs> Let us know uh, how that worked out yeah, for you. <laughs> n n nonetheless, this, 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 isn't, this isn't as bad as like, you know, if, if if Apple ever released an iPhone and the power and the power button was actually like recessed by two millimeters, who so actually could only turn it on and off with a pen, that's kind of an obvious mistake. You could say, okay, whoever came up with that idea, they're a bunch of doofuses. Yeah. iCloud is more like they just have to. It's the it's the it's the hard boring of hard woods. Uh, and they have to understand that it's going to be take, it's going to take them a few years before they have everything wired up and everything working to everybody's satisfaction. And before that happens, they're going to be parts that work great and parts that are leave people like eh, eh, and parts that really just cause rivers of blood to flow <laughs> throughout the hallways of every hotel in Cupertino. Is there anybody who's got it is doing it right, Andy or uh, uh, Justin? I mean, uh, do we, it feels like Google seems to be doing. Google. You know, yesterday Microsoft announced the new Office and that it's going to. This really surprised me. By default, Office on the desktop will save to SkyDrive, not to the yeah. local drive. Well, so, I've, I've I've had that for a couple of weeks now. 
uh, and I've been using it. I'm trying to use it a couple hours a day. Uh, Microsoft is another is another good example. Their uh, Office 2013 tries to move as much into the cloud as possible, or at least they try to make huge the, move. They, they, exactly, they're, they're trying to make everything that you do uh, to make the, your actual physical location, your actual physical device irrelevant. It's so they're they're so all in on this that if you are away from your home desk, uh, from your office desktop, and you're on so, any other machine that runs Windows 7 or Windows 8, you can log into Office 365, and it will stream the binary of office three, uh, office uh, wow. 2013 to that desktop meaning that not they won't it's not a web app you will actually have a working <laughs> running version of it and you don't have to and you don't have to restart and reinstall that's amazing you don't have to the whole thing you're and kidding we, i didn't know no, that that's, that's and meanwhile back at your office it, it it tells it tells your office machine oh by the way your user is using this this registered copy elsewhere, so we're not going to let people use you. And if you don't have, if you have a Mac or if you have, if you're running Windows XP, if you have just a studly browser, a lot of the functionality can be accessed through the web. And they're trying to make sure it works on touch tablets. They're making sure that's it's in a the bottom line is they're trying to make sure it's completely relevant to this completely new face of computing we're featuring we're seeing in 2012 2013. And if anything, they're being a little less ambitious than you would hope on some fronts. It's a it's a big deal that. Uh, well, one of the things I love the most about 2013, that I, mean, I know this isn't a Microsoft well, Office for Windows it, it, break weekly. Well, but, no, but it's going to be on the Mac, and it's but, probably going to be in the iPad and the iPhone, so I think right, it's but, but you, you see, uh, but, uh, you, you see something that they have really, really taken lessons from Apple, where just as though we've argued pro and con about how uh, a lot of the uh, uh, iWork apps, they have moved away from uh, – having you navigate to a physical location on your hard drive to open your documents to right. this app will manage your library. Right. You will not see a file picker. You will see a, a collection of, of documents. And now that's what Office does too. It's designed so that you don't have to worry. You don't have to no longer have to train users to understand how to navigate the C drive. It will understand that there are a bunch of documents in this project. Some of them are on the cloud. Some of them are locally hosted. Some of them are on the local network. And it fixes all of that for you. And it's... It's 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 an exciting. It really is an exciting time to be an observer of technology. I mean, I can't think of any. I, I can only think of the early '80s when everybody realized that command line stuff and text-based interfaces were no longer going to fly. We have to figure out how to build something that uh, is relevant to the way that people want to compute in the in the late night late '80s and early '90s. It took a while for Microsoft to figure out how to build Windows and make it work, uh, but they got there eventually, uh, and to the betterment of hundreds of millions of Windows users. So similarly, all these companies. Absolutely Apple included are trying to figure out how do we transition from a situation where we know that the user is sitting behind a physical computer, even if it's a notebook, we know that they are tied to the, they had their, their online, excuse me, their, their digital identity is tied to this one device. Now we know that we don't know whether they're going to be observing and interacting with this information through a desktop with a big screen, a notebook with a low power processor, a handheld with a tiny screen. And we have to make sure that uh, the services that we provide are agile and can project into any space that the user wants. It's not a trivial thing and it's going to be a embarrassing for a bunch of these companies for the next two or three years but like microsoft with windows eventually they're all going to get there and i do think this is what i think this is what users want right well i, I think they're, they're, they're there's a reason why this is a necessary growth point for apple and you know it's kind of in the face of part of their mythos which is it just works and that's why we right. feel this pain more acutely with apple because we're not used to it we're not used to getting something that is and as it, hyped. And it just doesn't work. And, and it just, you know, that was why Siri, Siri, you know, especially in right. the the early going, was amazing when it when worked. It worked right. You know, and now I think it's, it's a light years different product. If people right. kind of gave up on Siri, you know, through the first couple months and haven't played around with it lately, to me at least. Try it you know, again. You're saying try it the again. The uptime has been <clears throat> light Much years better. better. Yeah. It used to be one out of four right. things would just drop or not go. <laughs> now it's, you know, one out of every 30 that, right. that doesn't go. So they're getting better, but I still say that Apple probably, this is one area where Apple has not got a great track record. And you're right, Andy, it needs to, because this is the future. I think it's getting like better, Like it or not. You th and, you th and, and I would agree with you. They're it's, getting better. It, it, and it's going to be far incremental. From, they're not the best. No, they're not. Uh, yeah. Maybe Google is the best at this right now, might, with a Microsoft close second. Who's the best at this? Google has certainly has the greatest velocity. I can't think of a company that's turned around so many really struggling, mediocre products in the past two years. In, in this same, it's, <laughs> I, I, almost, 
and yeah, and faint I, I know praise. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm so totally serious. It's like I've gone from having respect for what they were trying to accomplish with Android phones to last year acknowledging that there are perhaps some people for whom an iPhone is not the best solution. Thank goodness they have this one alternative known as Android. To thinking, my goodness, this is a real Android 4.0, 4.1, our, our great handheld. I see you and carrying that that, uh, that S3. I okay. see and now, and, and, and now we have this this Nexus 7, which is a legitimately great 7-inch tablet. You don't even have to say, well, because it's cheaper than the iPad, so if you can't afford a, an iPad, this is a legitimately great little yeah. tablet. And so, I mean, I, I can't I, – I, they're, they're, every company is struggling uh, these Steve days. Steve Jobs once told me uh, this was 19 – he was at Pixar. This was 1994 or somewhere around there that Apple uh, – blew it now he remember this is after he'd been kicked out at apple that apple mm -hmm. blew it that they had a 10-year lead over microsoft uh with uh uh the macintosh and by sitting back on their haunches they let microsoft catch up and he yeah. felt that by by windows 3.1 they had caught up that apple had blown its lead and in some respects i feel like this is what happened that we let that apple let google catch up yeah, I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Microsoft caught up as uh, in the mid '90s. But you're absolutely right, and th 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 this is something that I keep trying to restrain myself because I think that I f I feel as though I'm hearing a lot of really defensive comments from my fellow like at Mac users and iPhone users and and, and and Apple fans in that there, there's a group of people that have been laughing at the monkey that at all the parts that, you know oh look he's he's there in the in the in the in the in the weapons depot behind the playing around <laughs> behind, behind the army barracks like oh look he's he's playing with the barrel the barrel that broken down gun oh look he accidentally managed to get the barrel on the hands okay well <laughs> oh he's, shoot he's, he's shooting gonna, he's, he's like, Run! Oh, look, isn't it isn't it funny he's now grabbed one of the bullets oh he's <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he'll never figure out how to load it. Oh, look, he figured out how to load it. But he'll never figure out how to aim it. Oh, look, he figured out how to aim it. Well, but he'll never figure out how to pull the trigger. They don't see that it's so, it, I mean, as, as this, actually, this tails back nicely to what we've been saying earlier. We, as Apple users, we're, ex, we're expected to see a product for the first time and it's finished and it's perfect and it's beautiful and it's a work of right. art. They don't understand that that's unusual for the entire industry. Yeah, most, right. uh, most companies are monkeys with a whole bunch of broken down parts in front of them and it takes them a while to figure out how to put those parts together. But even Eventually, they're a monkey with a loaded gun pointed at <laughs> pointed at Apple or any other competitor, uh, and so it's time to sometimes it's stop, time to stop laughing and time to figure out that nope, they got here. Windows Windows has actually gotten here in terms of desktops. Boy, that's uh, a, I'm not sure, that is a I'm great sure. metaphor, Andy. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think that Apple is the monkey with the loaded gun when it comes to the cloud. You know, maybe they're, maybe it's they're the putting, shoes on the other foot or the, they're putting <laughs> that together because the guns in the other paw. That's their monkey gun, <laughs> right? We're gonna take a break, Andy. This is good. I like we have that. A show <laughs> yeah, monkey with a gun. Uh, Andy Anako is here from the Chicago Sun-Times. Justin Robert Young from Weird Things. And that little thing you do called NSFW. NSFW, By the show. way, <laughs> we've got to change the name because I went to NSFW.com. Don't. Oh, good God. <laughs> why, sir? <laughs> it's NSW, NSFW show. show. That's why we call it. NSFWshow.com. That's it. It's called I don't think NSFW anybody can ever put one of those in one of those. Uh, it's pretty wrong. much that, Andy. It's as bad as I've ever seen. We do we do we do a, a Rebald show, but not that Rebald. Oh, that friend. was Rebald. So we're going to we got to change the name because that that's uh, bad. <laughs> take your paws off me, you filthy ape. Thank you, Sybil. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I do have an Nexus 7. I just came in the mail. Both uh, I as and mine just came. We're going to unbox that a little bit and take a look at it. Uh, MG Siegler yesterday said, "Now, I mean, this is MG, the Apple bigot, the guy who, <laughs> the guy who loves Apple. Suddenly, wow, like Andy uh, is saying the same thing. Mm, catch up time. Uh, we'll also uh, we got lots more to talk about, including uh, that Russian who's running the server that Apple just can't seem to shut down. <laughs> but first, I want to talk about the literally the most horrendously useful program ever." Every Mac should be included uh, with this. It's it's Text Expander from Smile Software, and the new Text Expander version four is Fabu. Fabu, <laughs> um, do you use it? I I have not. No. Oh, okay. So let me tell you, let me tell you the key to this thing. I got it. I always have it. I every put it on every Mac. It sits uh, in the Mac and it waits for you. Let's see. I'll just show you. Um, I'll open a sticky here. And I'll just show you as an example. Come on. Wait a minute. I'm, I guess I'm in full screen mode. Stickies. So I'll type something like, let's make this really big. 
Let's make this giant so you can all see what I'm typing here. What it does is it expands your text. Now, it can do it in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can have an abbreviation like SSHIP, and it will just, uh, that, the reason I use two S's there because you'd never type that normally, and it will just expand it. Yeah. I've set it up so it expands when I type tab, and then it just automatic. <laughs> well, apparently <laughs> I was wrong. That isn't a, a uh, I thought this was a... May, in fact, be a moth. <laughs> maybe, I've, maybe I've changed what I uh, have in my uh, boilerplate here. I have, these are all in my boilerplate. No, it's not in this one. Uh, it's, I, it's just one S, so let's do that again. I used to do SSHIP. Now I just type... Let's do it again. S H I P and type tab, and it puts in my oh. shipping address and all. Of Did you see how that happened? And it, even if you want, uh, you can have it pause and fill in stuff. This is for me a huge benefit. You know, people often are asking me uh, who does our great album art. I say, well, they're by the wonderful Nitro Zach and Snaggy at the Joy of Tech Comic. Email them. I can type in. These are all the abbreviations I have in there. Now, this is another cool thing. These are in Dropbox. So they're automatically copied over from uh, every machine. I have it in Dropbox. That's one of the things Text Expander will do. Text Expander is so sweet, um, dude. I'm all right. So how much? Because I actually want to. You got. Uh, if you do, you do a lot of writing. I do. No, I do a ton of writing, and and also I do a lot of repetitive. Uh, Anybody who does email now, is yeah. often typing the same thing over, over and over. And, over and again. I've been using a Gmail, uh, Google Labs plugin canned response. Yeah, but this does it across in, the Mac. Yeah, everywhere. But across the Mac. I everywhere you're typing text. Uh, version 4 adds uh, fill in snippet options like drop down choices. So you could have home or office as my mailing address, optional sections. There's a great demo video you can find out more if you go to smilesoftware.com. Slash Mac Break. Mac Sparky has done a little video here, David Sparks, uh, on the fill in feature that's very cool. Uh, if you've never used Text Expander before, see, I have snippets because I've been using it for as long as it's been around. But if you've never used Text Expander before, there's a new snippet creation assistant. This is what you'll use where yeah. you, you start it with snippets for entering repetitive information like email addresses, phone numbers. You can even paste in graphics. Um, anytime, you know, you, you can, I have my signature, my initials, anytime you send uh, the same thing over and over again, text expander will save you a lot of money. Now version four just came out. If you purchase after January 15th, it's free. Otherwise for registered users, $15 to upgrade for new users, 35 bucks, smilesoftware.com slash Mac break. They do not offer this through the, uh, Mac app store because of the sandboxing requirements. But if you have Text Expander 3 from the Mac App Store, which is, I think, actually what I'm running here, you can uh, get the upgrade price from Smile when you download version 4. So go to smilesoftware.com slash MacBreak. Watch the video. Take a look at this. You'll save time and effort and keystrokes. It is fantastic. Filling out forms. It can fix your typos. You know, I have from uh, Adam Engst, I have a uh, Tidbits autocorrect uh, that will automatically autocorrect all of these typos. There are hundreds of entries in here, and it will. And when I mistype something, it will automatically correct it. I love this text expander. Get it, use it. If you've got a Mac, you must have it. From SmileSoftware.com/slash/MacBreak. Uh, you know, I, I don't even shouldn't even have to do an ad for this. This should be a MacBreak pick every week. Frankly, uh, I live on this thing. Uh, should I open this up? So you've you've had one for a while, Andy, huh? The Nexus Seven. Yeah, I've had one for a couple of weeks. So people who ordered, as I did, the day they uh, offered it on the Play Store are just now starting to get them. Um, it shipped... Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can... This is a tight box. If you, if you go to play.google.com and try to order one, it ships at a very Apple-like two to three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a, I think this is interesting is because... It? The, the high you, demand... You, you need to cut that. Uh, I has had a hell of a time with the... Really? Did he? Yeah. He yeah. doesn't have sharp fingernails like I do. You're right. This is... <laughs> this is, this is some sort of special Kevlar, Kevlar vest. Wow. John's come with his big knife. Um, the, but, but Andy, correct me if I'm wrong. The real key to this, if this were $400, $500, it would not be exciting. It's $200 it would, is why it's exciting. No. no. Well, okay. Yeah, okay. That's there. There are two. There are two components to it. Number one, yeah, it's exciting. That's two hundred dollars, but not just because people would love to have an iPad that costs two hundred dollars. Right. The sort of people who were not excited by the iPad or people who were put off by the price 
and put off by the size of it. Right. I realized that this is still, it's, this is a 500, this is really almost identical to a laptop in the sense that it's a $500 device you have to carry around in a bag. And it's super slim and it's super light and the battery lasts, lasts a super long time, but it still has all those drawbacks to it. Whereas this is well within the price range of uh, of an ebook reader. I mean, right. uh, they, and 99 bucks is now the cost of a black and white e-ink based uh, Kindle device. Uh, the the uh, Kindle Fire, which really has to, I think, be regarded as uh, as an e-reader uh, with uh, with with benefits as opposed to a tablet. That costs one hundred ninety nine dollars. This is a real damn tablet. So this is it's uh, just this morning I was uh, out to breakfast and I had uh, I was actually reading my uh, reading my uh, my MacBreak Weekly research on this uh, fits in the front pocket of my five one one tactical <laughs> pants by the way not the not even the back pocket but the front pocket <laughs> and so I'm using it and the, the the waitress who's used to seeing me with technology asked me about it and I explained to her what it was and she played with it for a little bit and said wow so it's bit. it's it's cooler than the it's cooler than the iPhone but it's better than the iPad because it's small. And I, I paused for like, I didn't want to argue with you, with her about like what was good or bad about the iPad versus this. But I'm like, this is an ordinary person who's not necessarily like obsessed about technology. And she and got this, it. And this has like a, this had a a, a more fundamental appeal to her yeah. than the iPad because it's smaller and it's more affordable. Yeah. That's a big deal. I have for a long time, uh, I, I had the uh, seven inch uh, Galaxy Tab. And I think I was the only person, but I, because I'd held it, who said, you know, this is the right size. Now, what was wrong about that was Honeycomb. The Honeycomb operating system was terrible. Right, right. And this is an example of Google, kind of like the monkey, assembling the gun. <laughs> yep. They've got the bullet in the chamber now. Uh, this is pretty close. And and do you think this is why Apple is so widely rumored to be doing a seven-inch tablet? I don't. I'm not really sure. I think I, I. I honestly believe, and though this sounds naive, I think I think this is true. I don't think they would be even remotely interested in a seven-inch iPad or excuse, seven. People, would you believe that people have been correcting me about being wrong about a device that doesn't, doesn't exist? exist. Only yeah. <laughs> people have said it's not seven-inch tablet; it's a seven-point-eight-five-inch tablet. I wonder if you'll have the guts to correct your mistake. <laughs> okay, whatever. Be somewhere between. We probably seven should call eight it an eight-inch eight inch tablet because it's really round up. These, these, yeah. these small. These small smaller iPad, let's say. Uh, I, I honestly think they would not do a smaller iPad unless they legitimately and on their own right. believe that they could make a great product out of it. They wouldn't do it because they'd make something crummy, but only because some other competitor. Let, let me interrupt here. Something. This is one thing that Android does do very well. Because I have yeah. a Google account and other Android devices, I can restore from my Google account to this tablet. At this point, it's going to log in and it's going to download ex all the apps I have already purchased, all the, all the settings and so forth. Uh, to it, which means that in a few minutes, it's going to really be ready to run. No, but that's something you can do with iOS. Right? I guess you can. Yeah, because right. like, I've I've got new new iOS devices. You're right. From the I've, cloud, it downloads yeah. the apps. But boy, it sure takes a long time to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that they've they've got a very very good solution for this. But I, I agree with Andy that yeah, I don't think that they would be doing an iPad Mini because they would be fear they would fear that they would be losing yeah. money from these other things. To quote, uh, and it's. Uh, Right. Cool, because Andy's got the picture behind him to quote Spaceballs. Uh, <laughs> they're doing it for an S load of money because they right. think they can make it. You know, uh, the an iPad Mini, and this is the difference. I think that everything, and I've I've had a little bit of hands on time with the uh, seven, the, the Next seven, seven, yeah, uh, and it's good. It's very very good. I very much enjoyed my experience with it, but at the same time, Google's not making money on this, right? Yeah, right. Like we don't know how much of a bath. They're taking on it, but it's either very close to breaking even or they're losing, you know? Right. So I don't think that Apple does this if that's the same proposition because that hasn't been the way they've done it in the past. But but to be to be fair, there, there was a cost breakdown on the Kindle Fire when it first came out, and the the initial cost breakdown was close to that they're selling it close to cost, or maybe right. with about ten dollars profit for every two hundred dollar unit sold. That has since been adjusted, and now analysts believe that they're making about thirty to forty dollars. Okay, uh, you know, without, which is respectable. That ain't bad. Which is which is okay. If they, I, I think that if Apple, yeah, I, I also I also agree with you hundred percent there. They would not sell an a miniature iPad at cost. They would try to still make their 25 to 30 percent margin i think that if they're affected by these little smaller tablets it's only because uh it's a, t a classic turnaround where they're letting 
uh, they're letting Amazon and Google do their market research for them. If if they sell, if people sell, they've already sold millions of Kindle Fires, I think that Google will do exceptionally well selling these, and that will at least demonstrate to Apple that okay, we don't. We, there are people who really, really want a seven inch, or eight inch form factor. That means that we're leaving money on the table by not addressing those people who feel like they're being left out by the iPad. So that's the only way I think that these smaller tablets would affect Apple. And to your credit, Andy, you have always said that Apple does not do reactive. Apple doesn't look at the competition. As It's funny because they're one of the few companies in Silicon Valley that doesn't go, what's Facebook doing? What's Google doing? And and so I don't <laughs> think, I think you're right. I don't think they're looking at Google and saying, well, they're doing a seven-inch tablet. We better. Or, or, or when they have had those inclinations they have been their failures, and I think Ping was one of them. Ping was, <laughs> how do we bake social into Good point. a thing? So maybe and, they did do that with Ping, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one thing I would say about, you know, the, the iPad mini rumors are, you know, it is, I, know, I completely lost my train of thought. I was so going to say something really interesting. Say nothing then. Yeah, then yes. it evaporated. <laughs> I thought if I the stammered long enough. One thing I would say. If, if, I, if I stammered I long that. enough, I could come and up with it. sometimes it comes to you, and then sometimes you just look like a moron. Try, try Not that you look like a moron. But. No, I wore a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> try try to try to like master that facial expression that says, "Oh, I just forgot. I'm under NDA under, on something. I yeah. can't talk about." Oh, this. see, I better, that's I better look like I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I've only been in the Bay Area for like a month and a half, but now I, you, I need I just need to start inventing NDAs it's for all myself. About like, the I NDA, talked about baby. this, and I didn't already know things I can't talk I about. I can't talk about this. Is you know I have played I played I with this a little bit. I Isotope Comics, and he had <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had a I thought he had a Nexus Seven on the Comicsology app, but it turned I saw the Apple logo on it. I, I had played with this uh, uh, a little bit before, uh, uh, and, and even did we did a quickie review. Uh, but uh, but now that I'm getting to look at it a little bit more, the the, it, the good screen. It's a little dim, but it's a very crisp IP, IPS screen. same technology as yeah. the as the iPad. I mean, 220 even, right. DPI. Right. You 220 are, is good. You're I mean, the this only is, thing uh, in terms of all the the motions of of the graphics and everything, which is always where I've noticed. Android is kind of lagged more than than iOS. Uh -huh. It's completely caught up, except for pinch and zoom. I found. Yeah, it that, should be. That, I should be able. Oh wait a minute, I did. Pinch and zoom was still just just had a little. Did bit, you feel that lag clang. though? Yeah, I yeah. thought it wasn't doing it because I, I did well, this and it took a while. Yeah, it's 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 much much better. It's it's well, it's a Tegra three processor quad core as Very good as fast. you can really get an advice like that. Yep. Also, they actually made a big point uh, during the developer conference about talking about one of the features of Android four point one was to re-engineer the touch interface so that uh, to get rid of that kind of a lag i think that they've mostly eliminated it i don't think they've completely eliminated it at this point the what i notice more isn't so much that it lags behind so much as this is like a planet with slightly larger mass than planet Earth, where the gravity is just a little <laughs> bit different. Because I, 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 when I when I want to when I want to flick and scroll things, I expect a certain speed and a certain like physics that doesn't match here. So I find that it's pretty. It's ninety seven. It's what you're used to, though. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I know what you're laughing at, by the way, stuff. Justin. You're laughing at my music. Uh, no. Listen, you 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 were, you, you were laughing at the you fact. rock the club bangers, Leo. We've always known that about <laughs> Kid you. Kid Ink, Def Jam, a little Jet Life. Some tiger. Uh, okay, fifty I totally, cent. I, I totally remembered what I was going to say. So if we flash back to when the iPad, <laughs> it's went, the fifty cent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah fit, brought it all back. Fitty, fitty uh, jogs my memory. Yeah, as, baby. As he normally does. Yeah. Uh, when we when we flash back to when the iPad was announced, and the the chief the buzzword was it's it's a gray area, and critics of the idea of the concept before it got in people's hands was that we have an iPhone, we have a laptop. Why do we need this gray area device? And to think now that we are in a very short amount of time in a place where we're all kind of in agreement that a seven inch tablet to live between your smartphone and your iPad is not a crazy idea that people could want to own, especially right. at a $200 price point. To have three kind of touch interface computers is amazing. It just really shows how far we've come as consumers psychologically in thinking about how much we rely on these devices. Yeah. Well, because we have so much data now that we rely on that when we have different ways of articulating that data, it's not about the device, it's about the content, it's about the photos, it's about the books we rely on, it's about the music. And when you have a different and a unique way to uh, express that and use them in our daily lives, that's a big deal. And I, I also agree with you that a seven inch, I, I, it's hard to think of someone who would not, who would necessarily not want a seven inch tablet. Not that everyone should have one, but 
even someone who already has an iPad, I can see someone saying that, yes, but it's nice to have like a more portable version of the iPad so that I can something more practical for for reading that's more comfortable to hold on to. Uh, I travel with the iPad instead of with uh, my MacBook. If it's a heavy work week, I will actually take my iPad 3 and my iPad 2 Ooh. and have the luscious like two screen display. <laughs> this would work even better for that because now I have like a, a, right. an even cheap. If I didn't already have a second iPad, it would be, well, here's a $200 device that can do really things that the iPad can't do because of its size. And I could still have like that second side uh, in the hotel room, that second screen that's showing me Netflix or my Slingbox or, or, or my YouTube content while I'm actually doing work on my primary window on the iPad. And now it's here's just, the thing. This is 16.9. This, mm -hmm. uh, this is movie widescreen. And we, uh, we don't know, but the rumor is that the Apple will be 1024 by 768. It'll be 4 by 3 like the other iPad. Is, which, is, which is a better choice for a device this size, long and th tall and thin or square? You know what? I, I, I absolutely admit that I was wrong. Uh, when we were talking earlier, uh, like last year, about the idea of, uh, I'm sorry, months ago, the, the first idea of a 16 by 9, excuse me, a longer than longer right. and skinnier iPhone came out, I thought, oh, man, that seems so awkward. That seems so weird. I think that it's really more like... Uh, it, it's 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 more like I wasn't used to that form factor, and it was really difficult for me to just imagine, like see the movies uh, being displayed that way, right. or even not. As, I mean, for movies, it's great. It's more like the question of what do you do when you actually just have a web page? What do you do when you right. have just a document? We're not used to. I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not used to seeing like legal sized form factor. But it really was a case of it's not that this is wrong. It's just that Andy, you dim what you're just not used to it. So and it's so all right. Now, now I don't. Now I don't see any any problem with it. And also, given that most movies are now being formatted for widescreen format, you're losing less information off the screen when you right. display it that way. So there's actually a practical benefit for it. So again, I, I was wrong. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's hey, good. Look, we're violating copyright. Yay! Hey! 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 Shrek ah! interlaced. Yay! Uh, that's brave. <laughs> Come on, man. Brave. Yeah. How can you be watching Brave? I know. I think Pixar's going to make versions of that for on the Google Play Store that just stutter and stop randomly and like uh, pop <laughs> up their messages. That's a trailer. It's okay. You can uh, we can broadcast trailers, can't we? No, no, oh, you Oh, oh you you want to see movies that I've ripped? Hang on. <laughs> uh, you you, you mentioned prizes, anybody? <laughs> you mentioned earlier MG Sigler's review in TechCrunch. Right. Uh, and he is of course a virulent uh well, he would dispute the fact that he's an Apple fanboy, well, but I think the rest of the world... I would say he's a really uh, explainer of the Apple position. Thank you. <laughs> you know, okay. I think that would be a safe way to put it. Okay. Um, and I love I love his writing, but he his point was like, he leaves the iPad on the couch and he would take the Google well, 7 and that was kind bed. of a revelation to him, was yeah. that he would pick this up out of choice. Uh, and that's kind of interesting, isn't it? You know, um, I don't know how I'm going to react on this. I am, I am an Android fanboy. I admit it. I, uh, I use a Galaxy S3. I still have an iPad and an iPhone, and I love them, and I'll buy the new iPhone. But uh, I've been, I was early on the Android bandwagon. I like Android. And so I'm glad to see uh, people who uh, one might think ha didn't have open minds to something like this saying, yeah, you know what, this isn't that bad. That's a good sign. Well, and, you know, and to Andy's point, it's it's content. And, you know, the, the medium is the message. You know, if there's something that you would like to read, if you like to do reading in bed, then... So the small size does work, The small it? size, yeah. you can hold it easier. You don't See, Andy and I were the only two tired. people in the world who liked the Kindle Fire. <laughs> we, we both oh, liked no, the Kindle Fire. A lot of people Fire. like the Kindle Fire, which All is right. actually my other question about... Well, this the, is so much better because it's fast. But yeah. but here's here's the thing it's that really Apple Android. and Amazon have, which is retail outlets and relationships with customers that right. pay money in a way that Google doesn't. So how does Google get this in front of people? Yeah, and that's the thing. The King of the Fire, they blew off the shelves because every time you went right. to Amazon to buy anything, right. it was like, by the way, $200, and it kind of looks like an iPad, and it's getting decent reviews. <laughs> I don't know. Just add it to your cart. What are you? Right. It's familiar? easy. You know, like, and, and Apple obviously has these fantastic destinations where you can go. They look amazing. They have commercials that, that look great. Mm -hmm. They have a relationship with consumers. They have credit cards on hand. Google, that's the one area where Google doesn't have a natural advantage. That people who interact with Google products, except for, I mean, Android users is something that's, that's coming along, but it's relatively new, are by and large have a, a relationship that is free. You know, even for Android phones, you get your phone as part of your two-year contract it's not like you say well that thing that's what i plunked down my right. hard-earned money for so how does google get this in front of people do they sell it well, at actually, best buy or are they yeah actually actually i i wanted to look it up uh but yeah this is being ordered from uh staples office depot gamestop sam's club i'm not sure if that meant online or or in brick and mortar 
Right. So in theory, just, anyway. Well, I think it's, I at, it's at Sam's Club and, and Costco's, but, you know, if you've been to a Sam's Club and Costco's, it will be another right. new tablet, another new Android We were talking tablet. about that There's on There's been Twitter. a lot of them before, and that's, they've all blown. That's why Apple has a great advantage by the Apple Store. It's why Microsoft's doing Microsoft Stores more and more. Um, even even Sony, uh, Samsung just announced they're going to do stores. There is an yeah. advantage to having the oh, exclusivity. No, they, got, they, got a, they got a little static, right? Because they they look a little too Apple-y. No, no, you saw that the uh, the uh, judge in England who said that Samsung's not cool enough <laughs> yeah, exactly. to have actually stolen this, so they're off the hook. They don't have the cool factor. And then the judge danced off like a shadow. Like <laughs> I think the that's, it's very like strange. It. It's a very strange re ruling. Yeah. You, uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, cl clarifying, yes, it is, it is available actually in the retail stores. It's not just like staples.com. Okay, good. Uh, that'll help. I'm sure they, they worked very hard to get make that uh, possible. But there's, 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 also, there's also the dimension where so much of what's available on the Google Play Store is not necessarily available internationally. Right. So I mean, Apple, Apple, can sell the, Apple is selling iPads and iPhones in every single country. They can sell content in every single country. They have one hell of a head start over everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why if if numbers for this and and Andy, I from what I play with it, from you know hearing you and and hearing other people whose uh, opinions I very much respect, that it looks like this is a big leap forward in terms of especially a tablet this form factor and certainly at this price. I would just worry that in the context of how consumers will initially see it, that it will be just another tablet, and I, and I don't know if it's immediately going to catch on. But that, that, that cut, that cut I'm watching ways, you it? on TV. <laughs> You're listening to that really rambly point yet again because yet it again. wasn't long enough the first I'll time. I'll turn off the audio. That looks pretty good, though. <laughs> this is uh, one of a number of third-party apps on Android for a Twit. This is F, I think it's F-Con. And this is going to get a little weird in a moment. Oh, you're watching yourself, watching yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> There's Robert. There's just Robert Young. I like this. You know, I think this actually looks pretty good. Oh, it it, it looks absolutely great. Yeah. We'll get some get some HD movies on, uh, and it just looks brilliant. It's just it's just yeah. a wonderful device. Yeah. But what, what you're saying, it does cut both ways. Something that I've been sort of curious to find out is do people love the iPad or do they just love the idea of a tablet computer that works great? Because so far yeah. they uh. haven't really had the opportunity to make that choice. So what happened? I think it'll be fascinating when Apple, excuse me, if and when Apple comes out with a smaller sized iPad Mini, and the Google Play, and uh, the Nexus Seven is is a, is widely available, and maybe a third party will come out with a good two hundred dollar or two hundred twenty dollar uh, tablet. When people have the choice of simply choosing whatever they want to choose in that form factor, will they necessarily gravitate towards the iPad because it's fundamentally better, or will they buy the Nexus Seven because there's an Office Max that where they buy rubber bands two times a month and right. they saw one and they had an extra 200 bucks and they came home with one and they're as happy with it as they would have been with an iPad. I don't know the answer to that and I'm really keen to find out what it I is. I think there's a massive market for a $200, $250 tablet. Oh, absolutely. And I think that that's going to really propel this forward. And Apple, we don't know what the price is. No. I'm very surprised if they come down to that level. But yeah. maybe they will. And well, at that point, Apple wins, don't you think? I if mean, you have a choice between a 7-inch iPad for 250 bucks or a 7-inch Android... You're going to go with the iPad, right? Uh, I would because I have spent a lot of time with both devices, and I think that I could talk anybody's ear off on the differences between the two, and I can really define what I want. But I come back to my waitress at the diner. They are not necessary, or, or, or waitress at the diner who simply said, I like the form factor. I like the price. It works great. I'm of the, the, the five minutes I've spent with it in my hands, it seems to work very, very nice. So that's, I, I'd be willing to buy one if I had an extra mm. 200 bucks. Mm. I, I also keep coming back to the example of how I react to cars. I mean, in another podcast, I, I talked about my love for the, for the, for the Crown Victoria. <laughs> Which I think is just okay. a cool looking car. Spent it's a, a lot of time in the back seat of this. I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 I go I, get off this. I don't right know, I don't know why. The Do they all have the, the metal grid in, in between the front and the I back seat? I think it's seat? standard. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Just check. Anyone I, anyone I want to buy. Well, they, 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 make, they, make, they make the police version of it. They make the, 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 the limousine sure. version of it. I just, I just love the styling of it, of this, this car that is, not, is designed not to attract attention, but the fact that it's designed not to attract 
direct attention means that it's the focus of every car on the highway. <laughs> that, that, that's too unhip a car not to be a smoky. <laughs> and, so, and so, but and, and people say, oh my God, well, look, here, here are eight cars that you should buy instead of a Crown Victoria. It's just, oh, they're, they're terrible, they're terrible. And the thing is, and they're all right. They're all right about, I'm sure, about the handling of cars, about the power of the engine, about the service, about all this sort of stuff like that. But I'm the sort of car buyer who, if I saw a, a used uh, Crown Vic in good in good condition at the price that I wanted to pay for a car like that, I'd drive off the lot with it and I'd be very, very happy with it. And I'd put another 80,000 miles on it before it would fall apart like the Bluesmobile in, in the middle of Chicago. Uh, and I would be blissfully ignorant of the fact that I bought an inferior car. And I, I always come back to wait, that wait, 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 wait. Did you say the Bluesmobile? <laughs> 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Hit it. <laughs> the money, no, no, for, for, for me, the, now the money this episode's <laughs> definitely getting pulled. I know. I, I I know it's a bad idea to buy like a secondhand cop car or a secondhand taxi. <laughs> but every time, like I, I see the uh, there's I, I subscribe to the the, uh, the the government auction sites, and every time I see like a used Crown Vic that looks good. All I can think of is, is Jake, is, is Elwood talking to Jake. It's got a cop motor. It's got a cop shock, <laughs> cop suspension. It was built before catalytic converters were run good on regular gas. I'm like, I, I want a cop engine. I want a cop suspension. I want <laughs> we're going to take a break. Andy and I go, Justin Robert Young and Leo Laporte talking about anything we damn well want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, make something of it. Uh, under, <laughs> they will, believe me. Um, <laughs> and he's wearing sunglasses. But uh, first, you know what? I was thinking if you uh, were in the market for a new tablet. Sure. You might want to dis, uh, disabuse yourself of the old tablet. Now, you could just throw it in the closet and add it to that great big pile of gadgets there already. Or you could go to gazelle.com and keep it moving. Gazelle is the easy way to recycle that gadget and get cash. Visit gazelle.com and take a look. It's very They made it very simple. You know, it's just a drop down. Select the product you want to get rid of. Oh, that iPad, huh? Get an offer. Press the button. Now, this offer is good for 30 days, so you don't have to sell it right away. You can sit on it. You can think about it. Uh, I've got the 32 gig Wi-Fi plus 3G, and it's on AT&T. The condition is, wow, 320 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. That's going to not only get me the Nexus 7, but also a few apps to go along with it. Now, here's your choice. You can get a check. You can pay Pallet, or for an additional 5%, which, if I'm not mistaken, is another $16. Mm -hmm. I can use an Amazon gift card on here. Which might be where you buy it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Whatever uh, you want to buy. Right. You know, that's a pretty good deal. Now, they pay the postage on anything worth uh, uh, more than a dollar. Um, they uh, they take care of it. They take the data off of it. So, you, you know, you might still want to do that. But if it's too much trouble or you forgot to, don't worry. The... Uh, Engineers at Gazelle are great about taking stuff off. You get fast payment, fair prices, free shipping. It is the best way to uh, disabuse yourself of old gadgets and get yourself a little cash for purchasing that new gadget. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Lock in that quote for 30 days. But I got to tell you, do it today because I can tell you something I know for sure. Tomorrow, it's worth less, 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 less all the way. No, no gadget, no gadget has ever gone up in value. Maybe in a hundred years when it's an antique, do you want to wait that long? No. Well, here's what you do: is you is you have you put it in a time capsule. Exactly. Well, you you shrink wrap it, you know, yeah, and you yeah. keep it a, keep it in a freezer, a mile under the earth. Yeah, in a salt mine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like they do and, old film footage. And then cross your fingers <laughs> that it might be worth something in a hundred years. Well, you know, we're we're coming up now. It's it's getting closer and closer to when we're going to start hearing, you know, firm dates on when things like, you know, big announcement that's probably going to be the iPad mini right. or or iPhone. That's when the you, price goes down. Do yeah. it now. So Do it now. Lock it in now. Yeah. Lock it in now. Yeah, you could lock it in for 30 days and you're still Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Um they and have you paid it, you get it. this. They have paid almost 50 million dollars to 300,000 customers. This is a good company doing a great service with a great product. I want you to try it. And if they ask you, just tell them you heard it on Mac Break Weekly. They don't, I don't think they ask you. <laughs> but if they, they just did. Just yell at them. Yell just, at them. Hey, you know where yell I... yell at your you screen. Know, you know how I... Tweet it. Mac Break! You know what? You know what? This would, it would do me a good a favor. Tweet it. If you, if you sell something at Gazelle, tweet what you sold it for and, yeah. and, and what your experience has been at Gazelle. And just mention you heard it. And say, you know, I use made the hashtag that fat cash Weekly. listening to Mac Break That's Weekly. It. That's all I want. That's all I ask. Bling, bling. Gazelle.com. So... <laughs> 
Google is paying a fine of $22.5 million because of hacking your Safari on iOS, uh, which is chicken feed. But I got to point out the largest fine the FTC has ever given a private company. Wow. $22.5 million. That was that thing where they uh, bypassed the block third-party cookies on iPhone uh, in order to make the Google Plus button work, the Plus One button work. Um, and now, <laughs> it, you know, they have Chrome, which I have to say looks, I like it on the on iOS, but it can never be the default browser because Apple doesn't play that way. So they've got code. <laughs> Google's putting out code on how you do an app on iPhone or iPad that checks to see if Chrome's there and will launch so, links in Chrome if it is. So this is for developers. Like if you if yeah, you, you can't do anything about app, this. Uh, then you can put it in. And so this I, I think is similar, uh, unless I'm confusing things. That like in like I have a Tweetbot. Tweetbot. Know? So could when do you this. click a link in Tweetbot, it could launch it Chrome. It doesn't send you to Safari. It sends it to their internal right. browser. So you're staying inside. There and, 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 and if, if in Tweetbot, yeah, if in Tweetbot you save you on the web, it will then launch Safari. But, but Tweetbot launch, yeah. or any other developer could put code in that says, check if they have Chrome. And the reasonable presumption, if somebody has Chrome, they actually want you to open stuff in Chrome, right? Yes. Or no? I mean, maybe. I, don't, I, mean, I have Opera on my phone. Doesn't mean I use Opera. Yeah, I don't really want Opera to open. You know, I would. I would be kind of annoyed if there was one app I had that was just really super Opera fanboys that were like, "Well, you really <laughs> no. should be using it you know, because it's got a lot of extra features." That's a good point. Alex Buckler, like new sponsor, Opera. <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, Justin, you're fun to have around. What's I know. <laughs> he's a he's a good sidekick. Exactly. <laughs> he's kind of meant to be a sidekick. Is that why you're wearing a jacket? Sure. Uh, I actually, then I, I'm going to tap dance a little bit later. <laughs> second banana. That's me. That's that was him. actually my middle name. Second banana? Yes. Justin, second it's banana young. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love having you on. Justin moved to the Bay Area recently. That's why we're uh, we're fortunate. We can get a lot more of you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. doing NSFW live here. I in, love that. Thank in you. Twit, and I've Thank been doing you. TNT. And you know that that well, Brian Brushwood's soon going to become the second banana because you're here. I know. He's on the he's, he's on the where's screen. Where's he in freaking oh, Austin? Second banana Brushwood. Didn't, yeah. So there. <laughs> so there. So actually, I, that's a very good point, Justin. That somebody just because they have a browser doesn't mean they want it to be the default browser. I mean, there's a reason, you know, if, if the content of your app, you know, particularly works well in Chrome or runs faster or for some reason is I, I would to like that it. experience. I, cool. I would love it to be the default browser, but you can't change that on iOS. Or, or, or you want to do this incredibly radical thing on an iOS device, which is let the user make a decision about uh, what he or she there likes. There you go. I mean, that's crazy. You mean, you mean like have a preference? Exactly. Like, just, <laughs> like on the desktop, have a preference? I should have drunk all that cough syrup just before <laughs> Sitting down. Andy, you, I don't know, Andy. You're gonna you're gonna be uh, you're gonna become a apostate here <laughs> on the uh, on the Mac Break Weekly Show. No, I just had my checkup. My doctor did that horrible thing. You got a good apostate. My, my apostate okay. is fine. <laughs> uh, can I ask you guys? So uh, this Marissa Mayer thing breaks. Yesterday. Oh, we haven't mentioned that. Right? We should mention that. It's massive. It's not a Mac story, but it's an interesting story. Well, here's how I I was Marissa, thinking about just it. for those of you who are going, yeah. what Marissa Mayer story? She, of course, is the 20th uh, hire at Google and a very, very well-known Google engineer for a long time. Ran search, was the person in charge of the design of the Google search page and was widely praised for keeping it simple, keeping it elegant. Uh, recently kind of side-loaded over to location, which is still very important. Um, I think, though, I have to say she's not was not made part of the operating group at Google, which is the group with them, all of the power. And uh, I'm kind of not surprised that a few months later, She's taken the job of running Yahoo. She's the new CEO at Yahoo. Kind of a shock. Was not mentioned in any of the mm. lists of potential CEOs. In fact, remember, there, there were two candidates, the current interim CEO and the CEO at Hulu, who very quickly said, I know, please, no, no, I don't want to run Yahoo. And so uh, we all thought Levinson would keep the job. But now, out of nowhere, Marissa Meyer. Kind well, of a surprise. So go ahead. There, there's the backstory. Yeah. So let me let me ask you guys this. Uh, obviously, with iOS six, they're taking a gigantic step forward to get away from Google services right. with Maps. Now you have somebody who can kind of bring, let's say theoretically, Marissa Mayer can to some extent, at least on mobile, kind of right the ship a little bit. Wouldn't that be Yahoo. interesting if she makes some deals? 
that now if for Apple, does Yahoo now represent a more interesting partner for mobile services? Well, you know yeah. that Yahoo, which was suing Facebook of uh, patent lawsuits over social, has gotten in bed with Facebook. Yeah. Well, so, don't, this is like that's like their thing now is they, they're kind of like they moonlight as patent trolls. They, but yeah. but they, but that the suits dropped and now they're best buddies. I think Facebook. That's an interesting nexus. Yeah. It's the anti Google a, nexus. That's, Facebook, that's Yahoo, a, that's Apple. A really, that's a really great observation because. Every time you look at stats on where is all the web traffic going, a huge and disproportionate amount of it is going to iOS devices. Yeah. So if Yahoo said, at least while we rebuild, we're going to make ourselves at the heart of every transaction that I, every iOS device does, that immediately relegates it from that shop at the mini mall that got driven out of business when Walmart opened up across the other end of town to a very, 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 to, to something like a Target store. Where yes. it's maybe not maybe not number one, but oh man, does it have presence? That, From that Al Sunglass Hut to Target. Well, look at this. This is Sheryl Sandberg, COO at Facebook, and one of the most prominent women in Silicon Valley. Congratulations to Mar Marissa Mayer. She writes on her Facebook page: "Great news for women and men, <laughs> and men, and men across. Too. <laughs> you guys, okay? It's good news for you too across <laughs> Silicon Valley. All of us at Facebook look forward to working with you in your new role. We also want to thank Ross Levinson." the interim CEO for his leadership and real establishing, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think that, uh, boy, do you think that would be a good move on Apple to say, hey, we got Facebook, we got Twitter, we don't like Google, what about Yahoo? Yeah, Let's, we'll use Yahoo for search. We'll use Yahoo for uh, for maps. We will use Flickr as one of our as our uh, as our. I, if 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 a user wants to expose their iCloud based photos to the public, we will use Flickr as our transport for wow. that. That could be pretty big, and also the fact—the fact that now remember we're, we're, Yahoo search is not Yahoo; it's Bing. I'm sorry, and but the, but even even that even better, yeah. E even I mean, a Apple is not necessarily a. Uh, we get back to institutional uh, concepts. They are institutionally haters of Google. Right. I don't yes. think that, I don't think I don't think they would do something to cut. They would cut off their own nice nose to spite their face. I don't think they hate them that much. They are a business that with a, right. with a good head on, the head on their shoulders. But if they're putting up that list of pros and cons to working with Yahoo, saying, well, if we help both Yahoo and Microsoft, that puts Google in a much, much worse position. Anything that we can do to make sure that Google Plus does not become Twitter, anything we can do to make sure that YouTube does, not, uh, that uh, that uh, another video service becomes as relevant for personal videos uh, as YouTube is, that would be, that would at least get you a second meeting, I think. Very interesting. And, and they have to, if they do that, they have to at the bottom put a Justin Robert Young joint. I'm just saying. Bottom. I'm just that's saying. Good, who's the idea. second banana now, Leo? Uh, <laughs> Bam! I just, I, who's I, the monkey I, with the gun now? The, exactly. I'm the, the monkey the, with the gun. I'm putting together an idea. Uh, I, didn't want, I didn't want to interrupt you. You have been, at minimum, the number one plantain in this country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you, ne you never pick one up, and then you try one and say, hey, you know, maybe I should buy these more regularly. Maybe. I don't know. It worked out. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, the in-app purchasing flaw that Apple just can't seem to shut down. Uh, Apple reverses its decision on EPEAT. And uh, some hints about when we might see Mountain Lion this month. All coming up as we continue Mac Break Weekly. Justin Robert Young from NSFW is here. Andy Anaka from the Chicago Sun-Times. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends at Carbonite.com. I talk about them a lot, and I really hope that this is sinking in there are but i know it's not because i still get calls all the time on the radio show from people who say oh just the other day i brought my computer in to be fixed and when it came back my data was gone the guy made a backup but all i have is this one archive.pst file is that everything no it's it's his old email on outlook see <laughs> If you'd had Carbonite, you wouldn't be worrying about this. Carbonite is exactly what you need for backup. It's got three things that every backup should have. One, automatic, so you don't have to remember to backup. It's just always doing it continuously in the background. So you make a change. That's two, automatic, continuous. You make a change to a file, it's automatically backed up whenever you're online. And, you know, because it uses SSL, 128-bit encryption, even if you're at an open access spot at a coffee shop or on the road on a hotel, it's using that internet, but it's safe. It's, it's secure. It's encrypted on the way to the Carbonite servers. And if you would like to add trust no one encryption, you can. 
Only you have the password. Only you have the key. Carbonite doesn't have access to your data. And I really like that feature for people who really want privacy or need it to be compliant with you know, HIPAA and other standards. The third thing, and I think this is so important, it's off-site. It's not a backup sitting next to your computer. Good idea to have a backup sitting next to your computer, your near-line backup. But you should always have an off-site backup. And ask Padre, SJ, he'll tell you. Every IT guy knows this because if the worst happens, if there's a fire, a flood, an earthquake, if the building falls over, if somebody breaks in and steals everything, your backups are always safe. That's so important. And I got to tell you, at $59 a year... For everything on your internal drive and everything on a single computer, they also have plans for external drives and multiple computers. But the starting price, $59 per year per computer is amazing. Less than 5 bucks a month for everything. I want you to try it free, 15 days free, no credit card needed, just Carbonite.com and the offer code MACBREAK. If you decide to buy, make sure you would use the code MACBREAK when you try it. Because if you decide to buy, once you've used that offer code, you'll get 14 months for the price of 12. Two, two months free. Carbonite.com. Offer code M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K. Mac Break. And we thank them so much for the support of Mac Break Weekly. So uh, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. Apple has blocked or is trying to block the in-app purchasing flaw. Uh, I didn't know about this. And I would never, by the way, it seems to me unethical and rude in the extreme. But a Russian hacker, Alexei Borodin, has uh, discovered a flaw in iOS in-app purchasing that allows iOS device owners, iPad and iPhone owners, to download free in-game content authenticating through this server. Now, he was running this server in Russia. He's moved it. Apple brought it down, has asked the ISP to bring it down, but now he's moved it offshore where he says it cannot be accessed. You bring Apple, down server, I move server. I move server. You know you can't get me. I am now in... See, so, so don't worry, anybody. This is all completely above board. Well, then that's yeah. the other thing I got to point out. If you are using this server... Now, he says, no, wait. You don't un log out of iTunes account so I don't have credentials. Then you server. No. <laughs> and then log back in again so I can capture yeah. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not only immoral, unethical, and stealing... You might get ripped off by doing it. I just got to point this out. Apple has. It is likely you. I mean, is that you? Well, it might. seems likely. It is highly likely you are getting ripped well, off. I'm not going to say this. This this guy published a method. He published it first. It said, uh, if you're using iOS three or later, you can quote purchase any kind of in-app content for free without hacking the device. It cannot be prevented by developers using Apple's recommended receipt signing procedures. He discovered it, and then he created an, an online service, in-appstore.com. He's already processed more than 30,000 individual in-app payment requests. <laughs> Apple has been pulling down YouTube videos showing how to use it. Um, they, have, they have been very aggressive about trying to track this guy down. Uh, this is a quote that uh, they gave uh, uh, the next web, the loop column. The security of the app store is incredibly important to us in the developer community. Apple representative Natalie Harrison said, we take reports of fraudulent activity very seriously and we are investigating. They blocked the original uh, server. Then he migrated it to a new server. Apple was able to pressure the host of the original server in Russia into dropping Borodin. But now the new server is on an offshore country. And he says, the new service has been updated. <laughs> <laughs> Completely cuts out Apple servers, improving protocol to include its own authorization and transaction process. New yeah, message. The new feature also gives your dog incredibly <laughs> explosive gas pain. <laughs> Moose and squirrel. That URL again. <laughs> Have your credit number standing by. These events are waiting to take your order. Uh, it's been adapted to ensure users cannot use our service without first logging out of iTunes. Uh, anyway, don't... Don't worry, folks. Totally safe. Well, I mean, so what Borden says is it's up to Apple to adapt its APIs or place new blocks on service. He says Apple has to fix this. I'm just pointing out a security flaw. He's <laughs> apparently not... He's not asking for money. Well, he's, we'll he's, 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 he's still got to wear a pair of pants that is especially cut for his unique anatomy. Let's yes. Put that <laughs> oh, no, definitely. Because I think... <laughs> because I, mean, I, 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 I have... I have Problem will those tactical pants? Is. Will those tactical pants accommodate 
Massive I, I, cojones. I, I, think, I think he's. I think he's got utility utility killed grade. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, because there because every everything that he says is that oh we, we are complying we moved the server so that he's no longer yeah, being told yeah. why are you complaining well, you, yeah, what if, was if, your problem if this is a problem you fix the problem until then why you give me grace? yes what what is problem here I, at, least, I, I, at least he did yeah. I, I totally think that. Right after this goes on, that he gets a phone call from Tim <laughs> Cook. That's the Liam Neeson call from Taken. Like that was a great Listen, call. Be carefully. Yeah, I have a very I special have... set of skills. <laughs> uh, you shut down your server. <laughs> now, if, the, if this were NSFW, yeah, then this ends. if this were NSFW, I would play that. Uh, that's nuts. That's uh, that's in curse. the public domain. No, no, sure, yeah, 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 it's public domain. Sure. Uh, yeah, no problem. What, no could, problem. what could go wrong? You know how yes. often NSFW is taken down? We're not taking down all constantly. Often. Why? Every, I get the emails. You don't get the emails. We get taken most down? of the time. Well, I take it. I take it back. Most of the time, they say, "Well, 800 companies in Hollywood have asserted rights to some of the things on NSFW, but we're not going to take it down for now." Okay, I so get you, that. You have. We have to like uh, have a billion. I like, ignore it. You can buy. The ballerina footage that we aired, <laughs> yeah you know? that you may have yeah, ads on there that the I don't price is right. yeah that I don't get any money for but uh, other than that it's all <laughs> every time really almost every show I wonder if it's just something that we play all well, the anytime time or you something. play a clip they they they, they want to do a takedown oh it's probably because we play a lot of uh, clips yeah like viral videos and stuff yeah. <laughs> what was that oh that copyrighted content that we constantly play without any <laughs> hesitation oh okay. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> you and frame rate. And you know, this you is were, how... This well, is, then we're in. This is, then the common denominator is not me. This is, this is frame how... Frame rate and NSFW. Yeah, well, who's the guy who's on both of those shows? It, th this is how good a boss I am. Have yes. I ever have I ever complained? Have I ever said anything no. to you or Schwood? No. There was one... There was, there was that one time. The one time that we got... And it was very uh, within rights because we could have been sued. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't stay away from libel, slander, that kind yeah. of thing. But as far as, far as uh, the Hollywood goes, do whatever you want. Yeah. No, we go, we go, buck wild bananas. <laughs> it's a hilarious time. Okay, where were we? I have no idea. Well, Liam I'm, Neeson taken Liam Russian Neeson. hacker. Oh, the Russian hacker. There yeah. we go. Uh, I mean, I'll I'll say very seriously. I think that for Apple to bring all these in-app purchases and make such a big deal about taking their own cut and establishing this as a standard. They better that's what they're paying for. That's what lock it down. Yeah, that's what uh, people are are paying for when they give that cut. There is that security. That's that's the protection money, you know, for right. uh, the big bad Apple to I come agree. down on people like this. So it is in, it is incumbent they, they, they on them. Rain if, holy fire. If there's thirty thousand people, uh, thirty thousand apps uh, in app purchases that aren't going to the developers or Apple, but aren't going to developers, then Apple needs to do something about it. Besides chasing board and around. That's a lot of. Okay. War eagles from Angry Birds yeah. that aren't getting uh, paid for. Yeah. yeah. Also shows the, to to the layperson exactly how impressive like a DNS uh, attack can be. Right. That the, the whole the whole reason why this whole works is that you install like a new certificate that says that any time that that any app on your Mac needs to resolve a URL, don't go don't go through the normal way. Use this special server that's been trained to say that this server over here is actually Apple's iTunes store server and that's how it manages to intercept what the iTunes store is doing and so that anytime there's a piece of malware that can do that same trick you could go to you could be think you're going to Google you could think you're going to Amazon but you're actually going to invisibly another site right so that's going to come up in the future I think a uh, couple of sure. co install this certificate it will, <laughs> it okay. will give you free magic berries for your <laughs> <laughs> no problem <laughs> uh, Apple's apparently, according to Nine to Five Mac, Apple stores are having overnights. This is what you suspected, and we suspected July twenty fourth. Their, of course, their quarterly earnings call is July twenty fourth, and the last quarterly earnings call they said, "Oh, and by the way, he'll be able to get Lion tomorrow." And so the thinking was maybe this time they would do it again. And yeah, true enough, according to uh, whispers, according to Nine to Five Mac, Apple stores in the U.S. and overseas are planning overnights. For Tuesday, July 24th, seems like that means a launch of Mountain Lion on the 25th. Now, how crazy, because, I mean, I've been listening to, let, let's say, this specific podcast for, for a very long time. And it, in the earlier days when I was listening to it, the idea of an overnight for an OS release would seem Good point, especially pants. since you can't buy this OS release. You have to go to the App Store and download it. What do they need to yeah. stay open for? 
Well, because they still they still have a lot of machines they have to upgrade. Oh, uh, there might be training involved. There's almost certainly going to be signage involved. Of course. So it's probably it's probably something. I, I, I there was a time when I'd be excited. Oh, look, they wouldn't be shutting down the entire store. They wouldn't be keeping fifth. It's like no, I've, I've I've since talked to like people who like manage stores and saying you wouldn't believe that. No. They're, 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 <laughs> when, even even when there's a note saying hi, we decided that we want the 16 gigabyte iPads to be to the left of the 64 gigabyte iPads instead of to the right. That's like oh man, who's gonna have to pull over time to make that happen? So yeah, no, that's a very good point. In fact, nine to five even points out that this is not unusual to have Tuesday overnight. So. But given the fact they said it was going to ship maybe in maybe July. They're, maybe they're having a slumber party where they do each other's hair, talk about <laughs> boys. By the way, we, it's, 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 it's like an old characters. church lock-in, right? We are planning you know? a Twit slumber party, by the way. Stay tuned for details. Would you oh, is that a serious thing? I, yeah, I want to have a slumber party here. Like, what's going to happen? Well, I was thinking of doing it on the, the 24th. The feathers I, Oddly enough, the 24th <laughs> is the anniversary, uh, the one-year anniversary of moving into this studio. Yeah, but if Apple's going to have an overnight the same night, then all the, how, all the how, cool how kids potluck? will be going to Apple's. Yeah, we'll do a potluck. potluck. Every 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 like regular like host and guest brings a covered dish. Okay, <laughs> I like we should live stream it. We should all like ring the bell like one of those old you know TV <laughs> specials, and it's like, yeah. oh, it's NSFW, it's ding, Justin ding, Robert ding, ding, ding. Young, and I'll bring a casserole. Or I could just get a Ooh. stick and go. Why is he wearing Justin Robert Young. <laughs> And you, Escort. You, you do have to have three three names to get in there. Sure. Apple has reversed its course on EP. A letter from Bob Mansfield, outgoing SVP of hardware, says, We made a mistake pulling out of the recycling program that Apple and other consumer electronics companies had uh, put together with the EPA. Apple takes a comprehensive approach to measuring our environmental impact, and all of our products meet the strictest energy efficiency standards. We're not talking about Energy Star here. We're talking about recyclability. They also say we lead the industry by reporting each product's, product's greenhouse gas emissions. Apple products are superior in other important environmental areas not measured by EPEAT. <laughs> but we're not talking about that. We're talking about recyclability. So uh, after hearing perhaps that City of San Francisco would be no longer buying Apple products because they aren't EPEAT certified, this, the United States government, Ford Motor Company, a lot of big companies. Mansfield writes the letter saying, we recently heard from many loyal Apple customers who were disappointed to learn we had removed our products from the EP rating system. I realize this was a mistake. Starting today, all eligible, and I underscore eligible here, Apple products are back on EP. The iPhone has never been EP, nor has the iPad. Unknown what that means. Some have said that the Retina display is EP certified now. I'm not sure. Mm. Well, never. how is many it? times is that word... Uh, not ascribed to another company appeared on Apple mistake letterhead. Mistake. The word mistake. I've never heard Apple say that ever. Because yeah. uh, even with Antenna Gate, Apple never admitted we've, wrongdoing. We've used. We've heard the word hobby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hobby. The Apple TV wasn't a mistake. It was a hobby. Uh, yes. Although I love my Apple TV. I live on my. Apple it was. It was a police action, not a war. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but but there's there's a bit of a, a history. I mean, they, didn't they have a spat with uh, Greenpeace uh, a while Greenpeace ago? Greenpeace has been targeting them for a long time. And, and they, and they I don't came think back fairly, and good with them. Though. Yeah, and I don't think fairly. I think that Greenpeace just realized this is a big, big company and, the, and with a lot of left-wing supporters, so we can go after them more easily than Lenovo. Also, well, it's, that, that gets, I mean, that, if, you, if you go after Apple, you'll get a lot right. more results Press. than if you go after yeah. Dell, for instance, because right. who cares exactly. about Dell? Right. But I think, I, I wonder if this means that they've, they're, when when they use the word mistake, maybe internally they mean it was a mistake to drop out of the program instead of just lobbying violently into internally with yeah. the, with the committee to change how they define the certification right. for these devices. Right. So Which I because I, I don't hear to see them changing the way they make the devices. Yeah, because that 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 is a design thing. It's not. It's it it does. I mean, as much as much as I love the planet, and as a person without kids, I really could care what happens twenty years after I die. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but uh, but but in all seriousness, even even there, I'm, I'm like, if you mean that you ha that everything has to be made out of like you you ev nothing can be made as a nice tight glued sandwich. It has to be done with screws. You have to be able to separate every component from every other component. Uh, and I, I just start. I just took a look at the specs a couple a couple of days ago. I gave it a very cursory look, so I could be completely wrong. But a lot of it really is the. It was the disassemblability of some of some of these products that was causing the violation. It wasn't it wasn't as though that you know they were they were painting the logo on with mercury. 
Right. Uh, it, it, it was things that were kind of more subtle than that. Right. So I wonder if they're going to have some something that simply says quietly you know, with the, with a committee that here is how we don't believe that the, our manufacturing process creates a problem. Would it be possible to amend the certification that says that so long as there is in-store recycling so that we yeah. will take back this offending product and we will pay the money to have this disassembled correctly and, and recycled, will you then allow us to have the, to have that certification? I really think that's how the, this is going to end. Well, this, this has all the hallmarks of an internal argument between E. Pete and Apple that ended in Apple saying, well, whatever, you know, or, 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 or E. Pete saying, well, then you're not E. Pete certified anymore. And it went public and then was immediately kind of <laughs> corrected. Because I, I, I totally agree with Andy. I think that Apple would much rather have a conversation with them about how they are even better than their standards and yeah. have E. Pete agree to it. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we have uh, picks of the week from Justin, Andy, and myself. Uh, I should mention that uh, the folks who do Angry Birds have a new iOS game called Amazing Alex that might be worth getting. I don't think Alex Lindsay is a part of it, but we'll, f we'll find out. That was a reboot of <laughs> Alex, the Alex trilogy by Sam Raimi earlier in the uh, decade. I'm joking. Like okay. Amazing Spider-Man. I'm sorry. Clockwork Orange, the video game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come along, little Trugies. Would you like more Trugies? That I would buy. Purchase, <laughs> First, For a though, cricket bat, you seem to have blood all over this one. <laughs> a word from audible.com. You know, I should check and see if Clockwork Orange is on Audible. I bet it is. That is the most amazing twist in the novel. Uh, right, right in the right, kind of in the second or third chapter. It's kind of Amazing. Yeah, A Clockwork Orange, Anthony Burgess, narrated by Tom Hollander. There's also a dramatization. See, Audible's great. You know, you, I love Audible. Over 100,000 books in audio. Let me just, uh, I don't, this is risky, but I'm going to play a little clip of A Clockwork Orange here. I like to see uh, the movies, but I, I always will listen to the book before I go to the movie. Because the books, when they're read it like this by great actors, are really a... Um, movie in your head i don't i can't get this to play i'm not sure something wrong probably don't have something installed you could play it though go to audible.com browse around take a look at the books and pick something because i'm going to show you how you can get a book for free alex i mean sorry andy what are you uh, listening to this week Actually, funny you should mention uh, books based on movies. I saw the the, the movie uh, the, the Big Year uh, with Steve Martin and uh, Owen Wilson and Jack Black just hit like cable TV. So you, you get only nine opportunities a day to see it. Uh, so <laughs> saw it for the first time. Actually enjoyed. It. I thought it was a I thought it was a good a good movie. Uh, moved from there to I wonder I wondered how birders actually thought about mm. the movie. So I'm, at, I'm reading Birder's blogs and saying, like, wow, they actually treated us with respect and dignity. They got so many details right. And if they got a few things wrong, it was for the story. This is a great movie. It represents us well. And then made me think, well, what, 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 now I want to read the book that's, that this uh, was based on. It was based on uh, the big year is when birders decide to spend an entire year of their lives trying to spot as many birds as they possibly can in, in, the, in the United States. Uh, and, and there are records kept about who got the, had the had, saw the most birds in the year so the book actually follows three different birders uh, it tracks very loosely with the movie but it, it tracks three very very different kinds of birders as they undertake the the a big year in the same year uh, and i just it uh, I, you know how much I love audiobooks to begin with. I could have I could have bought the Kindle. I decided to get the audiobook because the reader was just so had so much of a birder sort of voice about him. Uh, it was it passed my highest test where not only do I sort of circle around in the car to listen to a little bit more of it, <laughs> when I got inside the house, I still had my phone. I had my earphones plugged in, and I was walking around doing housework and listening to the rest of that chapter. Wow. Uh, it's fiction. It's nonfiction, but he does such a good job. He's one of those great nonfiction writers. Uh, it's, it's, it's called The Big Year, A Tale of Man, Nature, and Foul Obsession uh, by Mark Ob. O B M A S C I K O B S O O Masic O Masic. I'm not getting that right. I've only pronounced my blood. The only bad, the only hard name. You know what? I it's do is my own last name. It's it's Obama with a chick at the end. See, I, see that, that's that's what that's what how your brain trips you up. It's, oh, Obama! I know how. To, no, it's not Obama. Obama. Look, I'm telling you, don't try to pronounce it like Obama. But it is Obama. It's not Obama. It's O Masic. O Masic. 
But the, it's, it's, he's a great author in that he really takes real world people and turns them into colorful characters by getting in every single detail of what their day is like, what their priorities are like. You have one person who is, you would imagine the 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 the, the, the archetype you picture in your mind of the obsessed birder who just is always about getting the next one, getting the next sighting, getting the next sighting. You have this other person who's spent, who's been, had the secret obsession all his life, but he's been busy with business uh, and, and working up through a company and only now that he's retired can he finally outlive live his passion, which is to spend lots of time in Colorado looking for birds. And this third guy who is the younger guy, the Jack Black character, as it turns out, uh, in a, who's a younger guy, recently divorced, kind of at a crossroads and he needs a new project to sort of focus on to take his mind off the fact that he's recently divorced and he doesn't know what he's going to be doing uh, for the next five years or so. Uh, and again, these are real life characters, but the way that he portrays these, you would think that they're fiction. Uh, and so I'm really enjoying this a lot. I think I'm only on chapter like four, uh, three or four, but I'm like hour number, hour number two of what I think is like a seven or eight hour book. Uh, but another very strong recommendation. All you got to do is go to audible.com and, uh, Sign up for the gold account. If you go to audible.com slash MacBreak, you get your first month free. That means your first credit's free. And uh, you can pick any book, and it's yours to keep. Cancel it any time. Pay nothing, but keep that book forever. You were saying you had something you, uh, I, you really I am liked. I am an Audible subscriber from getting the code from being a MacBreak listener. Good man. Listener. Good man. Uh, and the, the series that I am now in the middle of is they have redone do their new audiobooks for the uh, Admiral Thrawn trilogy of Star Wars. Now, uh, this is oh all no, they remastered them just like they 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 screwed up the original. <laughs> Did movie. they take Jar Jar no! out? Come Masters. on. So told George Lucas, you know how easy it is to do cut, copy, and paste? It's much easier than digital technology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so basically, I guess previously, and I know on Audible, they only had abridged versions that were done that were read by Anthony Daniels. Who, oh, that's kind of cool. C three PO. Yeah. Uh, however, these are done by Mark Thompson who does a fantastic job. Uh, these are all the original characters from the original trilogy. So you have Luke, Leia, Han Solo, uh, and then uh, a bunch of other different new characters that kind of come into this uh, particular story, including Grand Admiral Thrawn, who the story kind of revolves around. But Mark Thompson is a fantastic narrator, and I've only listened to the first one. I'm, I'm actually downloading because oh, my credits just renewed today. Uh, the second volume, which just came out in 2012, uh, but they also have all these sound effects. And normally, I'm not a huge sound effect and audiobook guy. Like, I kind of just like the the reading itself. Here's a, here's a little bit of this. is Mark Thompson. Shell to serve as a bridge officer aboard a ship like the oh, Chimera. Oh, yeah, you hear the ship in the background. Yeah. yeah. Now, he looked down at the equally young man at the engineering That's monitor. Subtle. That's nice. Now, and in it, contrast, it's, it's good when it's the, the Chimera lightsaber had sound. virtually right. no one you aboard know, except R2 young men. It, it bring, it's not distracting. It's kind of just... Makes you feel like you're there. Yeah. Uh, I like and, that. And, you know, for Chewbacca, for R2-D2, instead of it just saying R2-D2 chirped, you right. hear R2-D2, right. lightsabers. I mean, it's fantastic. So if you like Star Wars, uh, it's a, it's awesome. And Go it's a trilogy, it. so there's trilogy. three of them. But get the first one free. Audible.com slash MacBreak plays back on all your iOS devices, on your laptops, your desktops, uh, Android devices. There's a, even an Audible app now for Windows Phone. Looks great. Works great. Audible dot com slash Mac break. We thank them for their support. Let's start with our picks of the week. Andy, your camera sling. Yeah, this is now this is something I've been really hoping for for a long, long time. It's called the Sun Sniper. Uh, uh, oh, God, what's good? They, they have they have three. They have three different models. And I've forgotten what it's called. I have a press release here. Oh, it's called the Sun Sniper Strap Surfer. Um, those of you, <laughs> that sounds dangerous. Past, exactly. Well, in the in the, pa in the past few years, that uh, a lot of companies have come out with camera slings, where instead of wearing a camera around your neck through a strap, it's actually an over-the-shoulder sling, and the thing like rides uh, on on a bearing, so you can slide it up when you need it, then just let it dangle by your hip when you're not using it. Uh, however, I almost always am ca am wearing when I'm walking around some sort of a bag like right. this, especially like when I'm in a city. So I have one of those slings that works great, but I have to make sure that I have the stack order correctly. So I have to make sure I have the bag on and then the sling. And then when I sit down for lunch, I have to make sure I take it off correctly. This company has made this beautiful sling that actually integrates into whatever bag you already have. So it, this is this is what the this is what the component is, uh, and so you have this free floating thing that's that's that goes into the uh, the tripod mount of your camera, and then it has this really cool little catch right here. 
uh, that the strap of your bag goes through. And it comes apart very simply when you actually want it to come apart. And it's, it's actually held together by two magnets like this. And as you can see, people who are listening on podcasts, it's actually two halves <laughs> that snap apart. And it turns into sort of like this Z-shaped thing when it's taken apart. Uh, there's one that's sort of what well, the hook is one way, the other part, the hook is the other way. But when you click these back together magnetically around the strap, now there's actually no way that your camera can escape. And this is you'll, you'll find out in a second why I'm explaining how well made this thing is. This is all steel. It's all metal. It will not come apart. And yet it's really easy to take on and take off when you want it to. The bearing over here is also all machined metal, has a thick rubber grommet. You really dog it down tight so that you flatten and squeeze this. It's not going to come loose from the end of the camera. They even thought about, they're gonna, they made the, the strap part of it adjustable so that you know, some, sometimes you're, you've, you've got like an SLR, so you need to actually lift it up to, uh, to eye height so then you can adjust this long so that you can actually lift it up to your eye. Maybe, that you're, maybe though you're using like the LCD viewfinder, you don't have to lift it up quite so high. So you can adjust it that way. And knowing that you might be walking around with this thing, this expensive camera, be it a $500 uh, compact uh, system or a $2,000 SLR, you know, in a, in, a, in a tourist area, they actually made sure that this, this strap, there's a little bump here that you might be able to see. Uh, it's actually reinforced with steel so that someone can't just simply cut through the, cut through the strap and walk off with your $2,000 camera. This is all by way of explaining that this simple thing costs a hundred bucks. Wow, it's a, it's a hundred bucks. But if you're gonna, tr it's it. That seems a lot. Just, <laughs> well, it's it's made as well as you could possibly make a device like this. And also, if you were going to, I, I'm sure that there's a way to make this so that it only costs thirty or forty bucks. Where you decide, well, what's what if this end? What if right. the tripod end of it wasn't so secure? What if this would only uh, attach and detach by installing a, a bunch of screws and would be impossible to take off easily or would fall off e too easily or what if you made this not adjustable so i think that they're going to be uh, people someone like me who travels a lot and is always wearing a sling be it uh, uh, whether it's a little uh, bag for my ipad or a 15 inch laptop bag that i've always wanted something like this so i could adapt that into a sling your that's your initial response but maybe a month or two later you realize that I would be willing to pay $45 for it. And now I, this guy who I thought would never pay me back for the dinner that he owes me <laughs> actually gave me $60. On that basis, I'm now willing to buy this because it is exactly the perfect thing. I acknowledge it's expensive, but nonetheless, I've been using this uh, for, I actually took it out to the, my first like actual like walk around event, uh, rather walking around the city, taking pictures uh, uh, the other weekend. And man, does it work nicely. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. So very pricey. You can get it from B&H Photo for like $96. Uh, but it, I don't. I don't. I've not seen anything quite like it uh, else on the market. SunSniperUSA.com. If you want to find out more, the Sun the Sun Snipers Strap Sun Striper Surfer Strap Surfer. They really need to work on that name. <laughs> sure. Messenger bag not included. <laughs> they also. They also. Again, here, here, here's a lesson to you. If you if you're going to send a press release, the price a very good thing to put on the press release. Oh, maybe, look at that. Don't make me go surfing and looking for yeah. it. But I mean, yeah. or maybe they're maybe they're they 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 they're quick to point out that it comes with five hundred dollars in theft insurance. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's cool. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Here it is. Yeah, ninety six dollars. It was just buried underneath. Yeah. Fold maybe, it. Maybe my, my maybe my brain just sort of like blocked it out. It's like ninety six dollars. That's worth <laughs> my. I I don't own a suit that costs ninety six dollars. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Justin Robert Young, you have a pick, I understand. I do. Okay, so this one has been around uh, for a while, but especially because not only am I new to the Bay Area, but also I've been doing a lot of traveling recently. I've really, really, really relied on Waze. It's an oh, iPhone. Oh, it's so cool, isn't it? Yeah, an app for Android and, and iOS uh, that is also going to be part. They're feeding data to the new Apple Maps. Uh, but basically, here's the idea. It's a turn-by-turn -turn GPS. Oh, really? Is this where the maps uh, data for it's coming from a lot of places, including oh, okay. TomTom? Tom and uh, okay. but I think what they're what what the what Waze has that other people don't is a social layer baked in right. in terms of uh, reporting. Your if you're using the the app, you're feeding back data to their servers, so right. they can determine how fast, fairly accurately, each route is going. And also, there's more direct reporting where if you're in a standstill or you see an accident, you can report it, and now they'll reroute you 
somewhere else kind of on the And block. everybody else now, and which if, is great. Well, it's a way to, with ways, a way to yeah. socially support uh, your, your buddies. I so, love it. So for me, you know, if I'm trying to get from my office in San Francisco back to my place in Oakland, I know exactly right. what, the, what the entrance to the Bay Bridge I should get on by that time of day, depending on how backed up 80 is. Or if I'm coming out to Petaluma, I know when there's a accident on 580 that I should be going around in these crazy farm roads, which I've done right. two or three times. Uh, it's fantastic. It's free. And a real quick story. So I was doing a thing in Palo Alto and I'm new to this area. So I'm not used to things that I use on the internet being real places like businesses where that have signs and people in there that create the products. <laughs> so I just have a habit, an uncanny habit of just walking in like a hayseed and just like talking about how much I enjoy their stuff. So these very, you guys have a store. No, I, I literally, I walked in and I was just like these very quiet, polite engineers. I'm just like, Hey man, And they were just very polite, and they just were like, okay, thank you. Uh, here's what's in our new version. Please leave. You're scaring us. People never visit us. Uh, yeah, they're not used to visitors, but I visited them. I think they're great. Go this ahead is, and pick this, it up. It's free. This is, this is San Francisco. If you fire a gun in the air to show how happy you are, that's going to be taken very, very differently than it might back home. Exactly. Back from Florida. Yeah. It, that was that was how you told your mom you loved her, was by firing an automatic weapon in the mom, air. Mom, I love you. Stay back. <laughs> Waze is really, really, really cool. I can't remember my login, but I have it on the iPhone. It's nice because this makes perfect sense. You've got a GPS, you're driving along, it, it feeds everything right back. Yeah. Uh, I will say in terms of it connecting, like I have AT&T out here. It sometimes can be a little dodgy when uh, it gets on low uh, That's on another thing connection. that we do so well in the Bay Area. Yeah, AT &T. It's, it's horrifying <laughs> AT&T. Yeah, it is horrifying AT&T service. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan, so pick it up. So I got a couple of things uh, to tell you about. First, a little plug uh, for our friends. This is a uh, was a previous uh, pick of mine, uh, Alfred app. It's called. And it's uh, if you ever used Quicksilver, uh, it's very similar. In fact, when Quicksilver kind of went away, I switched over to Alfred, and I've been really happy. So it's one of those apps where, in my case, I press uh, Command Space, or I'm, I guess I use Alt Space, and I could type the first three uh, letters uh, of a of an application or a name, and it will pop up, uh, or a website. Uh, this has so many additional features uh, that I just really love. It, it really has replaced Quicksilver in my heart. Um, and they even have a power pack now. This is called Alfred, Alfred app. You can get it on the App Store, but if you want to use the power pack, uh, you should probably get it from Alfred app. But let me tell you a little bit about something that's going on right now. You know that we have a really great company called Cashfly that provides us with uh, bandwidth for all of our shows, including Mac Break Weekly's uh, video. Um, they're joining up with Alfred App for a contest just for you, you Twit viewers. You have uh, 20 Power Pack licenses, the high end license uh, for uh, Alfred 1.3. So uh, if you visit alfredapp.com slash twit and add Cashfly at Cashfly on Twitter, uh, you could be in this uh, contest. I really am a big fan of Alfred. It was, uh, it's been a Mac Break Weekly uh, pick several times, uh, and I just thought this was really cool. So thank you, Cashfly, for giving us bandwidth for all of our shows, and thank you, Alfred, for a great uh, little app that everybody who uses a Mac should have. And now here is a great way you can get a Power Pack license or lifetime upgrades free forever. I should talk to you like Michael Caine. It, it should, good. Alfred. Yeah. And the Batman. It's a power pack the size of a I think tangerine. They, I think they are British, so they probably it's could a do power that. power pack the size of a tangerine. <laughs> she was only 16 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one, uh, Gary Koffler sent me a link to a Cult of Mac article about something called Lion Tweaks. You've heard us compare, complain over and over and over again about the skeuomorphic features of... Um, uh, you know, iCal and all that, the mm -hmm. little stitching and all that stuff. Well, Lion Tweaks is a free app, although if you go to their uh, website, uh, ifrederick.com, uh, he does offer uh, you a chance to give him a little donation, yeah. which I would do. Throw him a few dollars. Throw him a few bucks, but you can download it uh, for free just by clicking the link. And let me let me launch uh, Lion Tweaks using Alfred app, by the way, and um, show you, oh, I have to move it to my, I haven't done that yet. Check automatically for updates. So you can change, for instance, I complained a while ago, and there is a command line to make the user library folder always visible. You don't have to hit the option. Mm -hmm. But you can just click here, and it's done. 
Library is visible. Enable the 2D dock. Remove system window animation. Remove with. But if you go down, you'll see you can get rid of some of change iCal leather to aluminum. Yes. <laughs> Boom. Yes. And then it's going to launch an installer, but I won't do that. There's a lot more little tweaks in here. This is Lion only. Um, it is free, but donations are asked for. I-F-R-E-D-R-I-K dot com slash applications. It's called Lion Tweaks 2. And uh, thank you, Gary, for pointing that out. I think it's a really handy little tool to turn off the leather. Uh, we do this show at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. No, not Monday through Friday. Why did I say that? Just <laughs> Tuesday. Once a week. <laughs> Just once. It lives Monday through Friday it, in your heart. It lives in my heart. You take heart the weekends off. All the time. 11 a.m. Pacific is 1800 UTC if you want to join in, watch us live, but we make on-demand versions available after the fact on our website, twit.tv, and everywhere po fine podcasts are aggregated. Andy and Akko can be found at the very nice Chicago Sun-Times. Justin Robert Young's in here to do uh, NSFW. We've got a new time. NSFW show. Show.com. Yes. We have a new time for you, right? No. no. You're on the old time. Yeah, we yeah, moved yeah, those yeah. hams away from you. <laughs> the hams, yeah. Uh, yeah, the ham. Dude, they're good. They went to Wednesday because they, they were a little confused. But uh, it, was, it was probably the oddest pairing. It on was the not a good pairing. Uh, ham Nation and NSFW was uh, was was uh, pretty hilarious. So now I think it was all about Android. All about Android and, and NSFW. And last week we actually had a fun little crossover. That's perfect. Uh, with with all about Android. So tonight, Tuesdays at uh, six, seven uh, Pacific time, seven Pacific, ten, 10 p.m. Eastern. Eastern time. Sarah Lane's on tonight, and we oh, get fun. ever we get ever closer to releasing our uh, our big book hoax. Which will come. Oh, stay next tuned week. for that. So I don't. I don't know. It's a. It's a pretty. It's a pretty randy idea. So I don't want to discuss it here ah, on the prudent. Save it for the randy yeah. NSFW. Sarah go. is launching a new show, and I hope she'll talk about it on NSFW. Oh. Our iPhone show. Oh, we'll make her next week. I five for the iPhone will be on Mondays, and I'm very excited about that. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Now get back to work. Break time is over.